It's the first time pole for George Russell, who starts at the front in the Mercedes alongside Carlos Sainz. That's his fourth front row start this season. Charles Leclerc, 63 points behind in the championship, goes from third in the Ferrari. Just in front of Lando Norris in fourth. The best start from McLaren in Hungary since 2012. The two Alpines form row three. Esteban Ocon in fifth. Fernando Alonso is sixth. Then comes Lewis Hamilton. A DRS issue in quali prevented him from a front row start. He goes from seventh in front of his old teammate, Valtteri Bottas, the first top 10 he's had in six races. He goes from eighth in front of Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen with power issues in qualifying. Goes from 10th, a full power unit change for him and his teammate Sergio Perez behind in 11th. Joe Ganyu in the Alfa Romeo is 12th. Then it's Kevin Magnussen in the Haas in 13th in front of Lance Stroll who breaks his start of seven consecutive Q1 knockouts from 14th. Mick Schumacher 15th. Yuki Tsunoda in the Alfa Tauri is 16th in front of Alexander Albon. Sebastian Vettel will go from 18th. Nicholas Latifi will be behind him as Pierre Gasly in the other AlphaTauri will start from the pit lane. Well, it is all teed up to be another corker in Hungary. It's really kicked up some fascinating races the last couple of years as we get towards the penultimate corner now. George Russell, quite a fast formation lap. He's going to try and back them all up so he doesn't let his tyres get too cold. Jenny. Yeah, just looking at who's starting on softs at the front. So Russell starts on a soft tyre, but behind him, Sainz and Leclerc have chosen to go medium further back. Verstappen also on the soft tyre. They want to get a good start. That soft tyre should enable them to do just that. Yeah, and it's a pretty even split down the uh, grid of soft and medium uh, starting tyres. Uh, Mark Priestley, former chief mechanic for McLaren. We're riding on board with Fernando Alonso right now, really making sure he gets the heat into the tyres because it's cold out there much colder than all weekend so far yeah and that's going to be one of the biggest questions isn't it what are the tires going to do what are the cars going to how are they going to behave in these temperatures because they're so different from when everyone else did their dry running on friday so a lot of unknowns and i can't wait as the last couple of runners make their way around the final corner now here's lewis hamilton vibrations in my brakes reporting vibrations in his brakes. Not the ideal start, a concerned uh, pit wall looking on from the garage as we uh, await Sebastian Vettel now and Nicholas Latifi in the Williams, which will be the last car on the grid. Pierre Gasly was just getting geared up to be released from his garage to start from the pit lane after a, a, a power change, a power unit change. The green flag will fly at the back of the pack. Carlos Sainz in the Scarlet Ferrari second. George Russell is on pole. It's all eyes to the lights and fit to the floor as we go racing in Hungary. It's a decent start from George Russell. Leclerc tries to slot him behind. Lando Norris is trying to split the Ferrari. So Russell dives to the right to defend that inside line. Signs in the Ferrari. It's going to have to go the long way round. He's late on the brakes. They're side by side on exit. Russell cuts across him. There might be a slight bit of contact there between Russell and Signs in the Ferrari. But it's as they started. Russell, Signs, Leclerc, the top three. Lewis Hamilton getting a bit twitchy in his Mercedes. Coming round turn two. Fighting with Lando. Norris, decent start from Lewis Hamilton to get right up behind fourth place Norris. Sainz trying to find a way through and also look behind him. His teammate is right up there too, coming through turn four, but it's Russell maintaining the lead. Yeah, all safely through the first few turns. There is a yellow flag in sector one. We don't know what that's for just yet, but Gasly has joined the pack for the pit lane. But out front, the two Ferraris got a decent start on that medium tyre, the soft tyre of Russell. We would have expected to give a few metres of advantage, but the Ferraris did really well. But equally, George Russell did very well to keep them both behind. Yeah, two by two, they go through team-wise. The two Alpines doing battle and the two Red Bulls have made gains. Perez is up to eight, just in front of his teammate Max Verstappen, who has now got back in front of his teammate. I couldn't imagine that would stay that way for too long. So uh, Max Verstappen making gains, now trying to get up uh, behind the Alpine of Fernando Alonso. There is damage further back though on the Williams of Alexander Alpon. Something hanging off of the front wing end plate on the right. He doesn't come into the pit lane, but it might be enough. There's a virtual safety car out there right now. Pierre Gasly from the pit lane caught right back up to the back of this pack. Yeah, and George Russell has built himself a 1.6 second lead, which of course will be maintained under to this virtual safety car. All the cars now slowing down to a predetermined speed, maintaining the gaps that they've got. There's a little bit of debris on the circuit. We can't see at the moment what that's come off, but that's what the virtual safety car is for, to allow marshals to come on safely and clear that away as the first cars, George Russell being the first of all of them, navigate their way through the debris. That debris right on the racing line as well, Jenny. 
What a start from Lewis Hamilton, though, managing to jump both of the Alpines, even though he said the car didn't feel right on the way to the grid. And getting up to P5, he started on the medium tyre as well. So interesting, they should be able to go a little longer than those that started on the soft tyre. Exactly. It looked like, actually, we're just seeing replays of the start. The two Alpines were too busy trying to defend from each other. We ride on board with the seven-time champion, Lewis Hamilton. It's a great initial start. The two Alpines are to his right. They're defending each other off on in front of Alonso. That allows Hamilton a clear run into turn one. Late on the brakes, right alongside Lando Norris. And it looks like he runs very wide, though. Norris just pushes him out on the exit. Has to dive and duck back in behind Norris. And that would explain uh, Lewis Hamilton's great start. The sound you're hearing now is riding on board the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Another initial decent getaway. He finds himself in between the Alfa Romeo, Bottas and Norris. But he has to bail out of it. And that allows Perez, his teammate, to slide right around the outside and gain a huge amount of positions. He did, yeah. Perez got a really good start, but as Jenny Wrench mentioned earlier on, they have managed to swap those round again, so it's now Verstappen back in front of Perez, but you're absolutely right. The two Alpines getting in each other's way and costing both of them positions uh, to the benefit of Lewis Hamilton. So, an interesting start, not too much in the way of chaos, but out front, George Russell did an incredible job to go wheel to wheel alongside Carlos Sainz and maintain never, position. Never in my life I saw a defense like Esteban today. Never. Fernando Alonso uh, reiterating our call on that thing. It was a very stout defending into turn one from Esteban Ocon. Alonso's looked like the quicker car as we ride on board with the Aston Martin of Sebastian Vettel. And I think that might be the reasoning of why we saw debris coming into turn two. The German turning in and I think uh, hitting perhaps the uh, Williams of Alexander Ablam. But we are back. Uh, green flag running again. And Russell already with a huge lead over the two Ferraris. And then there's another gap to Norris and Hamilton. Yeah, we did. Didn't see the restart there on our screens, but looks like Nor uh, looks like George Russell has caught the two Ferraris sleeping perhaps because he's built up an enormous lead. He had 1.6 seconds as they went into that virtual safety car. He's now got 4.1 seconds over the lead Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. And that, by the way, is another big question. The lead Ferrari at the moment is Carlos Sainz. The lead Ferrari in the championship is Charles Leclerc. What are the team going to do about that? Well, at the moment, they're playing uh, fairly fair. There's a bit of a gap between them. It's Russell who leads 2.7 seconds the gap as we come to the end of lap three ahead of Carlos Sainz Charles Leclerc is third Lando Norris is fourth Lewis Hamilton in fifth Ocon Alonso Verstappen Perez and Magnussen with a decent start up into the top 10 the sound you're hearing is riding on board with the reigning champion the Red Bull driver of Max Verstappen taking a really tight line coming into the final corner he is all over the back of Fernando Alonso in the Alpine DRS open for Alonso there is a bit of a strange sound with, with the engine Copy, we'll have a look. When do you hear the weird sound? On high gears. Verstappen looking down for a move into turn one on Alonso. He defends that as we hear Perez complaining about potential power unit issues. Jenny. Yeah, just Alex Albon has come into the pits now, damaged front winglet, so that's probably been replaced. I can't see from my position here, but a painful start for Williams and Albon. Very painful start. It's going okay at the moment for Verstappen, who has made gains. He's desperately, though, trying to find a way past Fernando Alonso still. And we know history dictates that Fernando Alonso is not an easy man to get past at any racetrack, particularly one where overtaking is already difficult. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So on one hand, Max Verstappen needs to play a patient game here. He doesn't need to win this race. Of course, he'd love to, but he doesn't need to. He's got a comfortable lead in the championship. But, however, he's on the soft tyre. The cars in front of him, the Alpines, have uh, Alonso, he's on the medium tyre, so now in the early phase of the race, that's where Max Verstappen should have the tyre advantage. As the race goes on, the medium tyred runners, and that includes the Ferraris, will start to be able to eke out their stint even longer, and that's where strategy is going to play a really big role here. Ricardo and Bottas had a poor start in that opening session. It is all looking good, Checo. We're happy with the power unit. As Sergio Perez, his engineer, comes over the radio telling they're happy, nothing on their side of things. Ricardo down to 11th, Bottas down to 13th. Uh, really poor starts from them to fall out of the points at the moment. Still leading now. The gap just cutting slightly below two seconds now between Russell and Sainz. They're all starting to evenly space out a bit, but the battle we're really focusing on is this battle over uh, six, the two Alpines versus the two Red Bulls. Alonso and Verstappen very close, coming out of turn three. Verstappen's gonna get alongside and straight through before he even gets into the left-hander of turn four. Verstappen through on Alonso for seventh, Jenny. 
Yeah, just having a look at the strategy at the moment, you want to come in at lap around 16 to 21 if you started on the soft tyres, just like Russell. If you started on the medium, like the Ferraris, then maybe lap 20 to 25 is where you want to come in. If you want to extend it to a one-stop race, then the medium to a hard is what they're saying is the best strategy coming in at lap 26. So pit window should open at lap 16. Lap five at the moment, we're on. Russell leads, Sainz, Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton, Ocon, Verstappen, Alonso, Perez, Magnussen. And Max Foster. Understood. So Fernando Alonso saying he's much faster? Yeah, he says he's much faster. He's talking about his teammate, of course, Esteban Ocon, uh, who will be the car in front of him. So what he's asking for there is a switch of positions. Uh, well, that can't really Alonso. work now because it, I think that's a delayed message because is. Verstappen has now got in front and Alonso is now falling into the clutches of Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. He has a look down the inside of Turn 1 as he does that. Further back, there goes Kevin Magnussen fighting with Daniel Ricciardo. Magnussen's got slight damage to his front left uh, end plate. He's going side by side with Ricciardo, who's got DRS into Turn 2. Now Ricciardo has the outside line. He tries to sweep in. Magnussen kicks him to the exit. We don't see how that one pans out because Perez is all over the back of... Um, Alonso, Magnussen has won out that battle so far for 10th with Ricardo with the final points position. Ricardo on the softer tyre though, which should be quicker than Kevin Magnussen. So Magnussen putting up a stout defence at the moment. We'll see how that one unfolds, but that battle for the lower pay points paying positions really unfolding. It's a massive weekend of sport across BBC Radio 5 Live at the moment. Of course, live coverage of the Women's Euros final, England versus Germany. The Lionesses in the final coverage gets going from four o'clock on five live kickoff at five o'clock make sure you're tuned in for that right now though it's the hungarian grand prix and russell is currently leading after setting his first ever pole position yeah and kevin magnuson you mentioned it earlier he's got damage it will be dry for the next half an hour okay that's a message to george russell that we can all benefit from knowing the uh, the answer to so no more rain coming there are a few spots at the start of the race that looks like it's going to stay dry magnuson has damaged the front left end plate of his car he's just got a black and orange flag and that's going to mean he will have to come into the pit so the team can replace that wing he's got no choice about it he's got to do it within the next three laps and that's going to effectively ruin his lap and in he comes now he's coming to the pits as the alpines are succumbing to the red bulls perez got uh, into turn one ahead of alonso but Alonso is fighting him back into turn two, but the writing on the wall for the 41-year-old Spaniard as Checo Perez gets through on Alonso in the approach. Now the left-hander of turn four for eighth. Alonso ninth, Ricardo now up to 10th as Magnussen comes into the pits. He's now plum last just behind Albon, who also pitted with damage to his Williams. Pierre Gasly up to 18th after starting from the pit lane. Jenny. Yeah, worth bearing in mind when it comes to that battle between the Red Bulls and also the Alpines. Alpine are competing for fourth in this championship. They're not competing at the front with Red Bull. So it's in their interests really to not battle too hard with the likes of Perez and Verstappen. And even though they wouldn't want to, just to let them go by, save their tyres, because their real battle is with Lando Norris in the McLaren in front of them and Daniel Ricciardo in the other McLaren behind them. Exactly, and Lando Norris a little bit on his own in no man's land, up in fourth at the moment, holding strong and uh, keeping Lewis Hamilton at bay. They come onto the start finish straight now, and there is a, a second gap at the moment between the two. Norris has this one in hand at the moment. Of course, they're on different tyres. Norris on the faster soft tyre, Hamilton on the slightly slower medium compound tyre. So expecting Lando to go for a shorter first stint. We'll see how this one planes out. The biggest gainers though at the moment are indeed Verstappen up for Mick Schumacher up four positions as well so that's the biggest gainers up and down the grid yeah so good start for the Red Bulls it's doing what they've got to do at the moment they've got to make use of these soft red walled soft tires are slightly stickier but they're not going to last as long of course as the yellow banded medium tires that many of their competitors are on so they have to make the best use of the early part of the race and that's exactly what they're doing out front George Russell on the same starting tire so he's on that red walled soft tire he's got a 2.2 second gap over Carlos Sainz so just maintaining that gap making sure that Carlos Sainz doesn't get into DRS range the big question, though, is how are these tyres going to fare? Because the temperatures are so different on Friday, nobody really has any idea what degradation levels are going to be like in these conditions. I think a lot of people will be watching the Haas of Kevin Magnussen as well, because he came in, he's the first driver to switch to the hard compound tyre, which we didn't think was going to be too favourable to use in the race due to the wind and the, the cold conditions as well. So we'll see how Magnussen fares. He's currently plumb last after having uh, to pitch that black and orange flag being waved at him for a damage 
Spanish front wing, which is not the first time that has happened to Kevin Magnussen. Think back uh, to Canada just a few races ago. Meanwhile, in that battle for seventh, it rages on as we go into lap nine. The sound you're hearing is on board with Sergio Perez in the Red Bull, moves down the inside of the Alpine of Esteban Ocon, makes it stick. He has to take the inside, slightly more defensive line though, coming into turn two. The left-hander, DRS slam shut, runs a little bit wide as Ocon takes a much tighter line. But once they go into the approach to turn four, the left-hand sweeper, he is through. Perez up to seventh now and uh, can set about trying to support his teammate, Max Verstappen, who's still running in sixth and ever so slightly clawing back to Lewis Hamilton, who is now only seven tenths of a second behind Lando Norris. So that battle heating up nicely. Yeah, uh, good work again from the Red Bulls, moving up the field together. Here's Hamilton. Starting to see signs of the soft runners struggling with the front end. And that was a message to Lewis Hamilton, which might be indicative of why he's suddenly been able to get under that second mark uh, to Lando Norris. The two Ferraris still holding firm. Sainz in second, Leclerc in third, 1.6 seconds back. And this weekend overall, it has looked like Sainz might just have that little bit of extra pace in his pocket over Leclerc as uh, we see how that one pans out. But right now, they're still two and a half seconds behind George Russell, who has looked calm, cool and collected from the very start of this race. Yeah, it looks good out front, George Russell at the moment, under control. But as you heard there of that message, the soft shod runners just starting to suffer the first signs of degradation. So is that going to uh, feature in the race of George Russell early on? Is it going to feature in the race of Max Verstappen? How's it going to factor into the strategy? And what are Ferrari going to do? We've still got Leclerc sitting behind Carlos Sainz. Sainz running very well. He's got the fastest lap of the race. But Leclerc must be starting to hurt now. 1.6 seconds behind his teammate. Can't move forward. Forward. got no real threat from behind what are Ferrari going to do about this longer term strategy a sign sets the fastest lap the sound you're hearing is on board with Lewis Hamilton coming through the right left chicane he's closed up to nearly half a second now behind Lando Norris it's going to be difficult to make an overtake in this final sector he'll try and close up though Jenny yeah, the pit lane here, 21 seconds is the time loss when you come into it. Hamilton all over the back of Norris at the moment, and I just wonder, the undercut is really strong here. That means coming in first and trying to beat your opponent that you're competing out on track. So I just wonder how many of them are going to try and do that when it does come time to stop in the pit lane. Lap 10 of 70 at the moment. Norris still in front of Lewis Hamilton coming into the final corner now. He'll get DRS on the uh, main straight. Can he close up under braking coming round the right? and a DRS flap open for Lewis Hamilton. Six tenths the gap, half a second. It's coming down and down and down. And Max Verstappen has now come into the shot too. Lewis Hamilton looks down the inside of Lando Norris, bails out last minute though, a slight lock up to his front right. And Max Verstappen is all over the back of Lewis Hamilton coming out of turn one, DRS open. They line a stern coming into turn two. Now Norris ahead of Hamilton. Verstappen now really making his nose shown in this battle for fourth place, headed up by the McLaren driver of Lando Norris. This will unfold nicely coming in to the middle sector. The left hand sweep now. Uh, the fast left hander for Norris holds firm. And while we wait for this battle to unfold itself, Norris now coming into the right left chicane. Can he hold firm at the moment? Difficult to overtake in this next part. Uh, in the meantime, let's get a quick update from the women's T20 India versus Pakistan. Eleanor Oldroyd is there. Yeah, in the Commonwealth Games, India winning by eight wickets with 38 balls remaining absolutely dominant. They only needed 100 to win. Did it in absolute, uh, at an absolute stroll. Smriti Mandana, 63 of 42 balls with eight fours and three sixes, steering them home. India's first win of the competition, Australia and Barbados, who have a win each, will play tonight. But India, very dominant indeed today, winning by eight wickets. Ending the... Uh final the lap 12 of this starting lap 12 i should say and norris still in front of hamilton but they're back on the main straight he's closer this time hamilton drs open so does verstappen hamilton moves to the inside of norris writing on the wall for lando norris hamilton scoots down the inside max verstappen wants to follow lewis hamilton through drs open for the dutchman he also gets through on lando norris so hamilton through verstappen through norris losing two positions there in the space of one corner the mclaren driver relegated to sixth as hamilton 
and that gets up to fourth ahead of Verstappen in fifth. And that was exactly the information that Lewis Hamilton's engineer was passing on to him, that Lando Norris, who's on that softer tyre with uh, Lewis Hamilton, of course, on the medium tyre, it was Lando that was starting to struggle with front end grip. His tyres already started to go away. The interesting question, though, is Max Verstappen, because his car, still on the red, soft tyres, looks like at the moment he's holding on. That battle between Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton is going to be a real interesting test of look at the two performances of both the car but also this tyre at this phase lap 12 of the race we talked about the first stoppers probably being close to around lap 16 but already signs of some people starting to suffer Russell still leads 2.2 seconds the gap Lando Norris having just lost those two positions he's as you say he's on that soft compound tyre stays out for another lap but he's falling into the clutches now of the second Red Bull of Sergio Perez round the final corner they come onto the start finish straight DRS open for Checo Perez and already halfway down the main straight he's alongside and through into the braking zone of the right hander of turn one Sergio Perez up into sixth place now ahead of Lando Norris down to seventh behind him. He's got a little bit of a buffer now, about four seconds to the two Alpines of Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso. Jenny. Yeah, it is worth bearing in mind. I spoke to McLaren ahead of this um, race and they were very clear on what their objective was, Team Radio. Guys, clips. What is going on? I've got slip. Yep, fail 20, fail 2 0, fail. Max was happened there, clearly with issues there, telling him to go fail 20. So slight uh, facial expressions on the uh, pit wall from Christian Horner, but he's still out there at the moment, holding fifth, 1.2 seconds back from Hamilton. They had to replace that power unit overnight. They had problems yesterday. That was a fail 21 yesterday that Verstappen got told. So all things not going particularly reliably with that power unit at the moment. I wonder how that will progress. But just to finish the point on McLaren, as George Russell flashes past me, followed by Sainz and Leclerc, he knows his battle is with Alpine. He's not too worried about Verstappen. Yes, they'd love to be on the podium, but their battle is the championship battle. So there's no point using up his tyres more than he has to. We are asking for it. Charles Leclerc there on the radio. He's now second back from his teammate Carlos Sainz. This is going to be an interesting one for Ferrari now, strategy-wise, Mark. Really, really interesting, because now Charles Leclerc is on the brink of DRS in the DRS zone behind Carlos Sainz. And we're seeing images now screen of the Ferrari team just starting to maybe think about getting tyres ready for a pit stop. Is that an early call to get Sainz out of the way, perhaps, and bring Leclerc through? Or could it be an early stop for Leclerc to go for an undercut to get him in front of his teammate? Well, hopefully it won't be too long until we discover how that one unfolds. They're making their way through turns 10 and 11 now in the approach uh, into this final sector of this lap. Russell, Sainz, Leclerc, the top three. Hamilton, Verstappen, Perez, Norris, Ocon, Alonso, Ricardo rounds out the point scorers in 10. Then it's Schumacher, Bottas, Stroll, Vettel, Joe, the top 15, Gasly, Latifi, Albon, Sonoda and Kevin Magnussen at the back and it's uh, Sonoda, Albon and Magnussen who have all made pit stops uh, so far in this race and now right at the back of this uh, grid round the final corner no Ferrari comes into the pits but DRS is DRS, open yeah. for Charles Leclerc for the first time in a few laps he's just under a second now behind his teammate into the braking zone he really closes up on the Scala Ferrari in front of him George Russell in the Mercedes is just within reach tantalizingly close as Lando Norris comes into the pit lane to change his soft set of tires off he's at down and now into the pit lane and coming through now so we'll see where he feeds out but still Leclerc behind signs yeah and that's Norris's tires just going away the soft tires running out of performance he switches to the medium tire in the pit lane but what's going to happen up front because George Russell's on the same tire the gap now just starting to come down gradually from Russell to sites 1.3 seconds the gap only seven tenths of a second behind that is Charles Leclerc so the two Ferraris now battling each other and could that take away from the fight with Russell out front? It was a bit of a slow pit stop as well for Lando Norris. Over four seconds. McLaren won't be uh, too happy with that one. But you're right, little bit of... Uh sparks being kicked up as Charles Leclerc's Ferrari runs over the rumble strips on the exit of turn 11 down into the 90 degree right hander of turn 12 coming in now to the penultimate left hand sweeper of 13 eight tenths the gap 
Does Sainz, Leclerc either peel off into the pits on their right-hand side? No, both on that medium compound tyre. Sainz has the fastest lap to boot at the moment. 1.1 seconds the gap he is from George Russell, who is still going out there. You have to wonder, is he benefiting slightly from the clean air, of course, in front of him, which means his tyres, the soft tyre, isn't degrading as much as the sound you're hearing is riding on board with Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Has a little look down into turn one, late on the brakes, closes up, closes up, but isn't close enough. Yeah, a science just now into DRS range of George Russell, and that could be a big moment in this race. I wonder if Science has been told to uh, pick up the pace slightly as he has closed in under DRS towards George Russell. Now Ricardo comes into the pit. So does Vettel. Stroll has just been in as well a few uh, a lap or so ago. But this battle raging on and heating up nicely, Jenny. Yeah, but what are Ferrari doing? Once again, they are putting Ferrari first instead of Charles Leclerc. Charles all over the back of Carlos Sainz. And we've seen repeatedly they just let the person in front go or they let them race. And I think this is so damaging for Leclerc championship battle get science out the way get Leclerc up front and get him challenging Russell Leclerc is now half a second behind Sainz but Sainz is now eight tenths behind George Russell all three cars in shot at the moment as they come around the penultimate corner and Carlos Sainz is told to pit he gets out of the way of Charles Leclerc he doesn't no, he pit. doesn't he doesn't come in he's told to box he comes around the final corner still George Russell's pitted George, George Russell's Russell pitted. comes into the pits though Jenny Yes, it's just come in. So both pit crews were out. Ferrari were out. Mercedes were out. Mercedes have done the pit stop. It looks slow for Russell. It's still in there. Slow pit stop for Russell when he came in. In comes Max Verstappen at the same time. The Red Bull is coming too to get rid of those soft tyres, but the Ferraris both stay out. Front right slow it looked like on George Russell's Mercedes. He's coming out of the pit lane now as we hear the tyres screech of Max Verstappen making his getaway from the Red Bull garage. Where does Russell feed out? He's going to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fernando Alonso in the Alpine. He might just get ahead of him just about. Russell side on with Fernando Alonso. He's not going to give this one up. Alonso's going to have the inside line coming into turn two. Russell on colder tyres going to have to sweep round. That becomes the inside of turn three. Russell through on Alonso and now has to set about chasing Esteban Ocon in front of him. But was that a ploy by Ferrari? Were they trying to trick maybe Mercedes into making a pit stop first? Or was Sainz saying, no, I want to stay out in the lead of this race? I think they had to do something different to Ferrari. So they would have called the team out. Mercedes would have seen that and maybe responded, but they probably did the right thing in the end there because they had to do the opposite. If they do the same with one car, they're on the same strategy effectively. Now the Ferrari mechanics are back out in the pit lane, but what we've got now is two Ferraris with some clear air ahead, and in comes Carlos Sainz. He does indeed. Now the two Ferraris side by side, but one in the pit lane entry as Leclerc takes over the lead of this race, Jenny. Yeah, so Sainz comes into the pit lane. The number 55 emblazoned on the side. The car goes up. All four wheels have changed. Once again, a very slow stop. He's gone onto the medium bandit, but 3.7 seconds isn't what they needed. He makes his way towards the end of the pit lane now. George Russell has caught right up to the back of Esteban Ocon. Side by side they go down the main straight. It's an easy one for George Russell with DRS. Where does Carlos Sainz feed out? He's going to be behind the Alpine of Alonso as George Russell goes skating through the left-hander of Turn 1. Sainz now having to look in his mirrors. Fernando Alonso closing up behind him. He's going to try and take this lap on this cold, cold track. Just 27.6 degrees. It was nearly 60 on Friday. So time to get heat into these tyres for Carlos Sainz and now Leclerc has got to push like crazy. So I'm really intrigued by that Ferrari decision there. They've got to bring Sainz in, I get that. They've got to get him out of the way of Leclerc. That's the right call. Now Leclerc has a, a clear track in front of him, but he's essentially used the medium slower tyre at the start of the race and yet put himself onto a similar strategy to that of the soft shod runners at the start of the race. But interestingly, Ferrari went for medium tyres again and that commits them to at least a two-stop race here. We thought it was going to be a two-stop stop race but they have eradicated any option for a one stop by making uh, a change onto the same tyre they started the race with. Well Leclerc currently leads this race over Lewis Hamilton but pit stop still to play out. Uh, let's get an update then from the Commonwealth Games boxing with Jonathan Overend. Very impressive performance from Scotland. Sam Hickey who's marked himself out as a medal contender if not gold medal contender in the middleweight division. Unanimous decision for him over his St. Lucian opponent. That's two wins in the day today for Scottish fighters but two defeats unfortunately for Northern Ireland with Jake Tucker losing to Billy Lapulian from Guernsey.
Leclerc stays out another lap as Sergio Perez comes into the pits for a change of tyres. Carlos Sainz is taking him a lap, but he's now through on the Alpine of Esteban Ocon into turn one and can skate after George Russell. That gap between Russell and Sainz now three seconds. Perez feeds out of the pit lane exit in between the two Alfa Romeos of Bottas and Joe Guanyu. Joe Guanyu fancies a little go here on Sergio Perez, I think, uh, but can't quite get alongside into turn two. Has to settle for his 11th place spot at the moment but Sergio Perez released into a bit of traffic there not ideal for him he's gonna have to do some overtakes to get back up to where he was through the left hand sweeper at turn four the Red Bull driver goes Leclerc 11.5 seconds the gap over Lewis Hamilton but neither of them have pitted yet so George Russell now onto the medium tyre and doing well, going quickly. He was fastest of everybody just a few moments ago. Now going personal best again. So his car working well on the medium soft tyre as Lewis Hamilton comes into the pits. Jenny. Yeah, slams on the brakes down to 80 kilometres an hour. With his grasp, you might be able to hear him. He started on the medium tyre, so not getting too many extra laps in on that. It's again slow. It looks to me slow front right maybe, but he's gone back out on the medium banded yellow tyres. So again, locking himself into at least two stops. Yeah, it was about 2.8 seconds as he trundles out of the pit lane exit now. Uh, Max Verstappen making a move on Fernando Alonso for fifth place. He goes through in to turn one. Leclerc, Russell, signs the top three. Now Leclerc, we await him to come into the pits. The sound you're hearing is riding on board with the Red Bull driver of Sergio Perez, who is battling to try and get through on Valtteri Bottas for ninth position. Down the inside into turn one. Stamps on the brakes, onto the accelerator and is through. Lock up though for both him and the Alfa Romeo Bottas coming into the left hand of turn two. They both survived to fight another day. Coming now into the left hand sweep of, the, uh, the, of turn for the Mexicans through. Yeah, just looking at Charles Leclerc's time, he's starting to lose time now on these medium tyres. He's just starting to, his lap time's dropping away, like the uh, the medium tyre starting to degrade, just affecting his lap time. So at some point, before that gets too, too tragic for him, they are going to have to bring him in as well. So Ferrari in sort of slightly no man's land when it comes to strategy here. They split the two cars, but not by a huge amount, assuming Leclerc ends up in the pits in the next few laps. Fascinating strategic battle unfolding here at the Hungaroring for round 13 of the Formula One calendar. This is BBC Radio 5 Live's coverage of F1. We're on lap 21 here. Leclerc in the scarlet red Ferrari currently leads this race, but he has yet to pit. Then comes Russell Sainz and Ocon, the top four, but he's about to lose out as Max Verstappen, the reigning champion, dives down the inside of the Frenchman. Last year's race winner for P4. Verstappen through, Ocon down to fifth, Alonso sixth, Hamilton and Schumacher, Perez, Bottas, the top 10. And Leclerc's losing so much time now, lap after lap on these tyres, that if he pits right now, he's going to come out just about exactly at the same point on the track as his teammate, Carlos Sainz. They did this switcheroo, they pitted Sainz to get him out of the way to give Leclerc this clear track. It could well end up putting them back on exactly the same piece of tarmac. You have to wonder what they thought they might achieve here with this one. The delta for a pit stop time is about 20 seconds all in. So you're right, it will come out very nearly uh, to with his teammate Here as the comes. Ferrari pit wall uh, come out Jenny Yes, yeah, so I'm just waiting for eyes on Leclerc. There he is, comes in, hits the pit limiter to take himself down to 80 kilometers an hour. Flashes past me in that scarlet Ferrari. He's on the medium tyres. So let's see what this Ferrari team could do. Pulls into the pit box. They put another set of the medium tyres on. It's a decent stop for them. Coming in at 2.9 seconds and the Ferrari's back out. Where's he going to end up on track? George Russell's coming around the final corner now in his Mercedes. Foot to the floor, down the main straight. They're side by side, but this time Leclerc is in the pit lane. He stamps on the accelerator. Russell is through on Leclerc. Where's Carlos Sainz, his teammate, into turn one? Charles Leclerc is through on his teammate, Carlos Sainz. But Sainz, with tyres that are much more up to temperature, much more usable, can Sainz close up behind Leclerc, or is he going to play the team game and just settle behind? But that's worked out then for Charles Leclerc. Yeah, just about, but they got it right on that occasion, so that could well that could well be what the major game plan was here. They've got to get Leclerc in front of Sainz. They don't want to make it too obvious, seemingly. They haven't been willing to make that call all season, but perhaps this slight offset in tyre strategy. They are on the same strategy, medium, medium on both cars, but offset by a number of laps now. So that's going to be a really interesting one to keep an eye on because they're on the same bit of tarmac with Leclerc in front. 
and fresher tyres as the race runs on. Right, let's get an update then from the uh, men's T20, England versus South Africa with uh, Nikesh Raghani. Yeah, England off to a flying start here in this deciding match of the series. They won the toss, they chose to field first, and David Willey has made an immediate breakthrough. Just three balls into the innings, got Quinton de Kock to chop one onto his stumps. He's also just had a massive LBW shout to Riley Rue, so it was given not out on the field. They've gone upstairs for review. South Africa could be two down without a run on the board in the first over. Currently, they're none for one. Right then, uh, starting lap 23, George Russell still uh, back into the lead now after the pit stops filter themselves out, but it's Charles Leclerc, 63 points back in the championship to Max Verstappen in second, 1.4 seconds the gap. Then comes his Ferrari teammate, Carlos Sainz, who was able to jump in that pit stop sequence. Verstappen then is in fourth with the fastest lap. Ocon, the top five, Hamilton, Perez, Norris, Bottas and Joe, the top 10 at the moment. And that gap though, to Russell, between Leclerc doesn't seem to be coming down. It's going the opposite way, if anything. Yeah, you're right. 2.4 seconds the gap at the moment. Russell back to Leclerc. Uh, all on the medium tyres, but it's Leclerc who has the freshest set of all of those at this stage in the race. Verstappen looking pretty good, sitting in fourth place right now from that lowly tenth where he started. Fastest lap of the race so far for Max Verstappen. Now all of the top ten running on the medium tyre. Degradation seems higher than it was on Friday, which you might expect. The temperatures are a lot lower. It was this big unknown, but the early pit stops, particularly on the soft Tire, giving a little hint that maybe that one stop that Pirelli predicted as one of the fastest ways around this race may just not be possible. The sound you're hearing is on board with the McLaren driver of Daniel Ricciardo through the right left chicane coming into the middle sector trying to fight with Fernando Alonso for 11th place and overall it was a bit of a, a shocking start for Daniel Ricciardo he's closing up he's within a second but it's going to be probably on the main straight where he'll try and have a go uh, just a reminder this isn't the only biggest sporting action happening at this weekend we've of course got the women's Euros final England versus Germany the Lioness is into the final coverage of that across BBC Radio Radio 5 live kickoff from 4 o'clock with live, uh, kickoff from 5 o'clock with live action from 4 o'clock this afternoon. As we see the Alpine into the pits of Esteban Ocon, one of the longer runners on that medium compound tyre, Jenny. Yeah, and I'm just talking to the guys at Pirelli to find out what's going on. Tyres not lasting as long as they expected for some people. And this is a 70 lap race. It's a long race and they're already coming in around lap 14, 15, 16 to change. It is possible this could migrate still to a three, three strategy stop. Well, Ocon has fed out just in front of his teammate. They nearly go three wide with the McLaren and there goes the Esteban Ocon Alpine. They're really fighting and Fernando Alonso trying to race hard too. It's a three-way battle here and in the end, it's actually Daniel Ricciardo who wins out coming into the left hand sweeper of turn four the McLaren of Ricciardo is in front of Esteban Ocon who is fighting with Fernando Alonso Ocon and Alonso have been non-stop in this race so far really aggressive in the opening laps defending like mad Alonso not happy with his teammates defense and I don't think he'll be too happy about that either Ocon 11th Alonso 12th I was just gonna say wait for the angry radio message from Fernando Alonso we know it's coming he's still under the rear wing of his teammate but Esteban Ocon not giving an inch he's not going to make this easy for Alonso and why should he closes up under braking coming in to the uh, next corner we ride on board and get a replay now on board with Daniel Ricciardo so Ocon comes over to defend but finds Alonso there coming into the left hander of turn two both Alpines run out wide that allows Daniel Ricciardo to nick down the inside and get them both go and he was happy with that one. Ricardo making two positions there in the space of a corner as uh, we get a little replay of Lewis Hamilton, who is currently running in fifth, uh, coming into turn 12. I think that was locking up, going off wide, picking up a load of rubber and dirt on his tyres. Not ideal for the seven-time world champion. He stays in fifth, though, uh, with uh, Perez behind him, Verstappen in front of him. Yeah, and out front, it's still George Russell. He's got a 1.5 second lead at the moment from Charles Leclerc, but that lead just started to come down. Leclerc now with his tyres switched on. Remember, he made that later pit stop than his rivals around him, than Russell and then Science, his teammate. He's uh, got fresher tyres on, but now they're up to temperature. He's just starting to put in faster lap and faster lap. The fastest lap of anybody so far is with Charles Leclerc and the gap now at 1.4. So closing in on the Mercedes of George Russell. It is indeed Russell, Leclerc, then comes Science. 
lines, Verstappen, Hamilton, the top five, Perez, Norris, Bottas, Joe, Ricardo, the top 10, Ocon, Alonso, Stroll, Vettel, Sonoda, the top 15, Gasly, Schumacher, Magnussen, Latifi, and Albon, the 20 runners. Still all 20 runners in this race, Jenny. Yeah, and Leclerc came in five laps later than George Russell to swap tyres onto these mediums. You can expect them to last between about 17 to 20 laps. So that gives you a rough idea of what we're expecting. Maybe another 11 laps from George Russell on these tyres. Then he's going to have to come in and pit and change tyres again. It's really intriguing, isn't it? Because no one really knows how this is going to pan out. This is uh, wet running yesterday, track temperatures losing so much heat compared to the Friday running. It's a bit like a, a re set for these guys yeah it really is and one to keep a, a close eye on other in fact two to keep an eye on and two alfa romeos because they're the only cars left in this race yet to make any pit stop they start on the medium tire and now with what 26 laps gone they're still on that medium tire but just look at their lap times they are what three seconds nearly two and a half three seconds off the pace of course the car's not quite as quick but that is a car that is losing lap after lap after lap when it comes to lap time but can they eke it out enough to then throw on maybe a hard tire and and go all the way to the end of the race so that's an interesting strategy just to keep an eye on see how it plays out i wonder if the two meanwhile actually leclerc scrapped that down into turn one has a very very late look on the inside of george russell drs aiding him doesn't force russell into mistake carries on russell's still leading but that gap now just six tenths of a second for this lead lap 27 russell in front of leclerc i was going to say i think the two alfa romeos might be hoping for a safety car that might be playing into their strategy a bit so they can get a free stop still going in eighth and ninth as you say as bottas though comes into the pit so he's given up the light in that tyre has gone. Joe Guanyu carries on for another lap. I expect he'll be in soon as Ricardo then makes his way up into ninth. But this battle up at front, heating up. Leclerc looks like the stronger car right now. The scarlet red Ferrari flashes through the right hander of nine into the left hander of ten. Coming into the next right hander. It's a roller coaster ride in the middle sector into 11. Now the short run down to the 90 degree right hander of turn number 12. And a couple of quarters and then Leclerc will have DRS and he'll be a lot closer than he was this time last lap around and he's still fancy to go on the British driver round the final corner they go the sound you're hearing is through the helmet camera on board of Charles Leclerc onto the main straight we go DRS open for Charles Leclerc how close can he get to the back of George Russell he's running out of time to do it he closes up under braking Russell defends going into the inside that forces Leclerc to go wide but he might try Try the up and under and carry a bit more momentum in the run down to turn two. DRS open again for Leclerc. Side by side, coming into turn two. George Russell defends that inside, squeezes Leclerc to the outside. He has to bail out of it and tucks back in. Leclerc in second. George Russell maintaining the lead. Great racing, great driving from both of them. It was fair, it was hard, but they maintained positions at the moment. The big question coming into today was what did they do to that Mercedes car over the course of Friday night and Saturday morning to get it so quick? on qualifying and would those changes have taken so much life out of the tyre to generate the one lap pace could it hurt them on Sunday so it might seem it's looking at the moment like Charles Leclerc although his tyres are around five laps fresher seemingly the happier of the two cars right now and it's George Russell out front seemingly holding up the red Ferrari of Leclerc and to keep you updated as well everyone has now made a at least one pit stop but Joe Guanyu has just changed his set of tyres so the Alfa Romeo's both in then Russell again six tenths now as they come into the penultimate corner the pit lane entry is to your right you drag the car out left to swing it into the right hander and the final turn number 14 onto the main straight then foot to the floor George Russell doesn't have DRS Charles Leclerc does he's within a second he's closing the scarlet red Ferrari on the silver arrow of George Russell into the braking zone once more he closes up dramatically how much traction does he get on exit for the Monegasque racer he's not as close as he was this time last lap ago but Russell takes the wider line Leclerc much tighter coming into turn two Russell really wanting out wide on the exit tucks back in for the next right hander Leclerc able to carry a bit more momentum as we go to the run up and the elevation change of turn number four but now it gets trickier into the middle sector approaching the chicane 
difficult to overtake here. Yeah, nothing between the top two. Carlos Sainz has dropped a slight amount. Three seconds back from the, the first Ferrari to Carlos Sainz in third place. But the battle out front is going to start hurting Leclerc the longer this goes on. George Russell knows this is a difficult overtaking track. There's that one main opportunity. It's into turn one under DRS at the end of the long straight. And it's not even that long a straight. But at the moment, he's got the legs on him just about to protect that lead into the braking zone of turn one. And if he can continue to do that and eke out this stint, it's going to be Leclerc with his fresher tyres that's going to start hurting more and more and more. Russell once again coming around the final corner as we end lap 29 and start lap number 30 of 70. Still such a long way to go in this Hungarian Grand Prix. The last before the summer shut down Leclerc with DRS once more closing onto the main straight. That forces Russell to defend the inside line coming into turn one. Leclerc closes right up to the back of him once more. What's it going to look like coming into turn two? Well, it's Russell defending the inside again. Blocks off Leclerc's attempt there Come but wide. Russell runs out very wide indeed Leclerc able to carry much more momentum through the right hander on the approach now to the left hander of turn number four Russell really with a compromised line coming through the left hander Leclerc is all over the back of him but he still can't quite find a way through these two have been racing each other since they were kids from karting days all the way through they know their moves but right now Russell is able to hold on to that lead Jenny Russell making his car as big as possible. The wind has picked up. It's now a headwind coming down the start, finish straight. It's making it even tougher to try and make the overtake stick. Six tenths to get now. A little bit of breathing room <laughs> as it goes for George Russell, but it's quickly down to half a second. Leclerc is just able to stamp on those brakes coming into the right-hander, the 90 degree of the uh, turn 12. Now the left-hander of the penultimate corner, George Russell. I think he's managed to actually get a little bit of lap time back in his pocket there, but it's Leclerc on the brakes. And then when he has DRS as well, it's really able to make the gains. Down again once more, lap 31 on the main straight. Leclerc closes, Russell has to defend. Almighty down into turn one. Leclerc squeezes round the outside and he gets through on George Russell. The Ferrari in front of the Mercedes. A spectacular move late on the brakes, round the outside and tucks in front of the front wing of the Silver Arrow of George Russell just as they exit the corner. Charles Leclerc is now in the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. That was a really great move. Under control. We thought he went in so deep on the brakes. I thought there's no way he's going to get that car brought to a stop, but he did. It was nice and clean. It was great racing between the two of them. It puts Leclerc in front, but that battle between the two that's raged on for a good three or four laps now has now allowed Carlos Sainz in the other Ferrari to start closing in. Just two and a half seconds back, but just behind him is Max Verstappen, who started back in 10th place. It's been a brilliant recovery drive so far for Max Verstappen as the uh, Ferrari garage erupts in a round of applause for that move. And already he's pulled 1.3 seconds, Leclerc, on George Russell, who you're right, Mark, is falling into the clutches of Carlos Sainz and then the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. How quickly can Sainz and Verstappen get through on Russell? Can they get through on him? Because they're going to fancy a go now and a fight. Well, at least Verstappen will certainly fancy the fight, but maybe the win of this race. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's tyre degradation that George Russell seemingly starting to suffer with now. He's just starting to drop away with his lap times, allowing Carlos Sainz to, uh, to begin to close up. If that continues, it can go through that phase. You can get it back. You get this graining phase, particularly in the cold temperatures where the surface of the tyre just starts to roll away in tiny little beads, like if you drag a pencil eraser across a desk. But you can clean it up. You can go through that phase if you look after the tyres. Now he's not in that tight fight with, uh, fight with Leclerc. He might be able to start managing temperatures just a little bit more and looking after his car. Further down the field, Sebastian Beth Vettel, the four-time world champion who announced his retirement earlier this year with a, a nice move down the inside of Fernando Alonso into Turn 1. Strategy-wise, tyre-wise, it's not quite working out at the moment for those runners that have switched to the hard compound. Ocon down to 10th, Alonso just relegated to 12th, Bottas 14th, Schumacher 16th, Zhou 17th. Chris drizzling more and more. Understood, thank you. And at Magnussen, 19. But Here could this go. change everything? <laughs> a radio message to Max Verstappen. It is drizzling out there. Before this race started, there was a 60% chance of rain. It had already rained earlier in the day. 
That could change things yeah. at that 32 end of. Don't tease us, Max Verstappen. Come on, is it going to rain or not? We just caught a, a glimpse of the radar screen from one of the pit walls. It does look like the bulk of the rain shower is going to miss the circuit from what we just saw. But there's clearly some drops falling on the circuit right now. And that will be a worry to everybody. It'll be a concern for the teams because they're going to have to be on their toes when it comes to strategy. Well, this is uh, unfolding into a fascinating strategic battle here, but one that Ferrari, it's worked out for them on the odd occasion that it does. Leclerc in the lead of this race now, the gap two seconds, then comes the other Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. Max Verstappen is fourth, Hamilton fifth, Perez sixth, the two McLarens, Lionel Stern in seventh and eighth, Norris ahead of Ricardo. Stroll, it's done very well for Lance Stroll so far. He's up five positions in that Aston Martin, up into ninth place in front of Ocon in 10th, Vettel just outside in 11th Alonso, Gasly, Bottas, Sonoda, Schumacher, Joe, Latifi, Magnussen and Albon line up the rear of this field. All 20 runners still going and uh, as the gap starts to close, close and close between Carlos Sainz and George Russell in that battle for second. Yeah, decent uh, run for Pierre Gasly in P13 at the moment but of course he started from the pit lane so dog last and behind everybody as they all went through turn one. Only then was he allowed to leave the pit lane. Up into turn 13, uh, P13 now. He's on the medium tyre having made one stop uh, along with everybody else apart from Alex Albon who's made two. He made an early one for crash damage. Uh, so Gasly doing well so far. The two Red Bulls, some of the biggest movers, of course. Max Verstappen up to P4 from P10. His teammate Sergio Perez just two places back in P6. Signs DRS shuts close at the end of the start-finish straight. Closes up under braking to George Russell. He's now about seven and a half tenths back from the British driver who was hoping he might be able to convert his first ever pole position into a first ever race win. Right now, it's not quite panning out, but this is a, a massive turn of pace for that Mercedes car, which has looked str like it's struggled all weekend long. We're now just seeing a, a replay. The sound you're hearing is riding on board through the helmet camera of Charles Leclerc. And I think this is the move once again for the lead round the outside. Superb move from Charles Leclerc taking the lead from Russell in turn one. Jenny. Yeah, just having a look as it stands. If the race was to finish like this, Max Verstappen would still lead. He'd pick up 12 points and be on 245. Charles Leclerc would remain in second place, but he'd pick up 26 points. He's currently got the fastest lap under his belt and would be on 196 points. So the gap would be down to is the first of the second stoppers to come into the pits. He'll come off of those medium tyres and switch. I don't know, another medium. Who knows what he's going to switch on to? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's uh, all bets are off down further in the field for the Alpha Tauri drivers. It's not quite working out. Hasn't been their weekend. Traffic now starting to play into uh, the front runners' strategies now as they have to negotiate their way around the Williams. But here comes Carlos Sainz late on the brakes on the inside into turn one on George Russell. Can't find a way through there. How do they exit the corner? Russell has a little bit of a gap now between signs but he has very much made himself aware in the mirrors of George Russell and this is allowing Leclerc up front to really extend his lead he is still within camera shot uh, briefly as we see it but George Russell through the left hander of turn four straight into the right hander of turn five and they approach now to the right left hand chicane doing all he can to keep his Mercedes in front of the second Ferrari. Yeah, he's doing well, George Russell, because he clearly hasn't got a car that's as quick on race day as it was over and above the Ferraris on qualifying day yesterday. We're at the halfway point in the race now, lap 35 out of 70, and it's looking good for Ferrari right now. But there's a spinner. It's the Alpha Tauri. It's of Yuki, Yuki Sonoda coming out of the exit of the chicane. He spins it round. His rear wheels are on the grass. He lets Sergio Perez make his way through, and he's back underway fairly swiftly no damage it seems on that Alpha Tauri but of course uh, he has just been into the pit so perhaps cold tires playing its part there and uh, we saw his teammates spin out there yesterday uh, in three practice three I think it was uh, so uh, the two Alpha Tauri is not quite enjoying uh, great form in that car uh, for the Hungarian Grand Prix the sound you're hearing on board is now Sebastian Vettel in that Aston Martin who is chasing down the Alpine of Ocon the BBC's chief F1 writer Andrew Benson uh, looking at the strategy as Sebastian Vettel has to cut the chicane. Carries on, though, but loses a chunk of time. Uh, Andrew Benson uh, filling us in about strategy and tyre compounds at the moment. We are expecting Aston Martin to be on a two-stop strategy. The Alpines, who are both on the hard compound tyres, only one stop. So this battle, constructor-wise, 
looking like it's going to be a fascinating one because Lance Stroll has got his way all the way up to ninth. But the fact is, he'll have to come in for another stop as we see a replay of Yuki Tsunoda just uh, losing the rear end and coming out of the back of uh, the uh, chicane and, and losing that rear wheel. So that battle in the constructors, Aston Martin, of course, a lot further back, trying everything they can. But Alpine and McLaren in that battle for fourth in the constructors, the two McLarens currently ahead of the two Alpine. So it's not quite panning out for the uh, team Enstone. Yeah, so we expect most of the front runners to, in fact, we know the Ferraris at least are going to have to make another stop because the one pit stop they made, they went from the medium tyre that they started the race on back onto another set of the medium tyres. The rules in 2022 and for the last few years have dictated that you have to use at least two sets of dry compound tyre during a race. So they will have to make another stop. Fully expected, by the way, because tyre degradation looking a little bit higher than people expected, certainly higher than it was on the Friday in the warmer conditions. The difficulty, of course, is going to be when do you make that pit stop? Charles Leclerc, not with enough of a gap out front at the moment, 4.4 seconds back to Russell. He's not got anywhere near enough of a gap to slot back in to, a, uh, to, get, to make a free pit stop. Hasn't got that much of a pace advantage. But they've also, that little spin from Yuki Tsunoda, perhaps a little wake-up call, because it can just take a moment like that to bring out a yellow flag, to bring out a safety car or a virtual safety car, and then you've got to be on the button when it comes to making your strategy calls. Jenny Gow. Yeah, it's also worth bearing in mind that some of the teams don't have a huge amount of choice when it comes to tyres. Uh, for example, the pairing at Ferrari, Sainz and Leclerc, had two mediums, a hard and three used softs to go on to. So they've used their mediums. Where are they going to go next? Are they going to have to go to a hard? Are they going to go to the soft? They have to pick one of them. Which are you going to pick and how's it going to react to your car? It's going to be a big question mark over what the teams decide to do now because they haven't got the ideal tyre to put on. They haven't got another medium for most of them. No, it's a good point, but I think if you're going to switch to the soft tyre for the end of this race, it's got to be a late stop. We've already seen how quickly the soft tyre is degrading in these conditions. So Ferrari, if they wanted to go soft at the end of this race, I think they're going to have to go quite long on this stint. Now, that may well be possible, but it just depends how the others start to play this, whether Russell can do something different. Somebody at some point is going to switch to a hard tyre amongst the front runners, and that will then be the one that everybody else starts to watch. I'll tell you what, though, up front, Carlos Sainz is not having an easy run of it getting through on George Russell. He's extremely slippery now for some reason. And that's Lando Norris reporting things seem extremely slippery and it might be because there is more and more drizzles of rain certainly on the camera lenses is that playing a factor now making the track surface a little bit slippery but Carlos Sainz was within about half a second of George Russell in second he's now fallen back 1.2 seconds the gap uh, and Max Verstappen is now all over the back of Carlos Sainz so not looking in front so much as Carlos Sainz now looking behind him at the reigning champion yeah Max Verstappen making uh, supreme progress through this race from his 10th position start up to fourth but now closing in as you say on the back of that uh, of that Ferrari and a message from George Russell on his radio just saying he's struggling with gears whether that's struggling to select those gears whether he's getting some sort of oscillations through the gearbox we'll keep an eye on it of course he's currently sitting in second but it's uh, a little bit of a gap just dropping back from Russell to Carlos Sainz but it is Sainz who's now coming under most pressure. Uh, Jenny is that Red Bull? Yes, I am, and it looks like they're coming out for a pit stop. They've got some shiny new tyres, and in comes Max Verstappen, the man leading the championship. What's he going to do here? He pulls into his pit box. They've got a brand new set of the medium banded tyres, so they put those on. It's a decent enough stop. He gets away in 2.4 seconds. A good stop, in fact, for Verstappen. Where will he come out? He's already used the soft. He's onto his new medium. Good stuff from them. Well, his teammate screeches past him on the main straight, so he should feed out into a nice bit of clean air if he can get in front of the Haas, which is going to be a bit of traffic for him late on the brakes. And I don't think the Haas is going to trouble the Red Bull too much. It's Kevin Magnussen who's uh, fighting down at a lapped runner. Here's George Russell. Oh, box, box, box and push hard. So George Russell now being told to box as Verstappen does get through on Magnussen. So clear out out in front and then it's his teammate Perez. So good work there from Red Bull and their strategy. I wonder if they're going to try this undercut then and come in before Carlos Sainz because Verstappen was really closing in on Sainz but perhaps unable to make a move. The sound you're hearing is Sebastian Vettel and the Aston Martin going down the inside of the Alpine of Esteban Ocon coming into turn one and makes that move sick and Vettel gets into the top ten. More and more I think of it. I was just going to say, the more I think of this, I think the Ferrari are going to have to go onto the hard tyres, and that's exactly what they're doing with the team out in the pit lane for a ready for a uh, Charles Leclerc pit stop. Jenny. Jenny. 
Yeah, Leclerc is into the pits. George Russell follows behind. So let's see what they can do. Ferrari first to run to the car of Charles Leclerc. They get the hard tyres on. And away he goes. Just behind them, it's the Mercedes. They've switched tyres as well. Good stop for both of them. Three seconds for Leclerc. 2.7 for Mercedes and George Russell. Indeed. And crucially, they're on different uh, tyres as well, though. So we'll see how that one pans out. Science take over, takes over uh, the lead of this race. Then it's Hamilton. Then Leclerc feeds out in front of Perez. Where does George Russell feed out? He's behind Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. That has not worked out for George Russell in the Mercedes. And he's not just behind. He's quite away behind as he desperately and aggressively weaves the front end of that car to try and get some temperature into those medium yellow band tyres, as does Charles Leclerc. So tyre temperature really key here. And I tell you what, this is now a fascinating second half of the race because the leader of this Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc, is now on the hard tyre, a tyre that nobody really has any real data on, certainly not in these conditions. It could work really well, but in the cold temperatures, it's really easy to grain. It takes a long time to come up to temperature, and this could well provide an opportunity for Max Verstappen, no less. Max Verstappen started in 10th, has just put a brand new set of medium tyres on. He doesn't need to stop again. He can if the uh, opportunity provides itself later on, but he doesn't need to. And he's now going to have a lot more performance than the Ferrari up front. And on board with Max Verstappen, he catches right up to the back of his teammate Sergio Perez, coming into the right-hander of turn 12. And Perez quite violently moves over to the right and gets out of his way as quickly as possible. Verstappen through and already right onto the back of Charles Leclerc, who has just pitted. He is out. He is on that hard compound tyre. Verstappen, though, is on the quicker tyre. DRS open. Leclerc comes over to the right-hand side to defend. He squeezes Verstappen to the pit lane exit. Verstappen will have the inside line down into turn one, late on the brakes. Leclerc tries to find a way through. He can't fight back. Verstappen made quick work of Leclerc there and is through into third place. Leclerc down to four. So this is now a battle of who can make these tyres last longest. Charles Leclerc on the harder tyre. That's going to go to the end of this race, surely without too much trouble, but with less performance. Max Verstappen's now got himself ahead of the red Ferrari, but how long is his medium tyre going to last? We're on lap 41 of 70. It's definitely doable, but it's going to take some tyre management. George Russell also trying to fight back with Sergio Perez. He's all over the back of him coming into the middle sector as we get a replay of right on board with Max Verstappen. Leclerc straight away on that main straight darted to the right and just kept in the middle in the end and he now that the Verstappen open, didn't he? Yeah. straight down the inside. Verstappen didn't need inviting twice. No, that's right. He closed the door but not enough. Already, already I think Leclerc the word aggressive. Just out was cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the case because you can see, though, we saw coming into turn one, turning into the right. Oh, no! As Max Verstappen, though, has he had a spin? Smoke coming off of the rear tyres. He's getting back on board. It's getting spicy in the final corner because George Russell is going down the inside of Sergio Perez. But what happened there to Max Verstappen? Because he's fallen behind Charles Leclerc, who's got back through. Meanwhile, just behind, Sergio Perez is trying to fend off George Russell, who is through into the break zone round the outside he's gonna trouble Max Verstappen in the Red Bull he's right on the back of him what has happened to Max Verstappen who is trying to fight back he does so down the inside into turn two on Russell Verstappen is back through on the silver arrow of George Russell and the Mercedes Perez in sick and uh, keeping them company is uh, Kevin Magnussen I think he's uh, lapped down but my word what on earth happened there to Max Verstappen we haven't seen a replay of it but it looked like it was coming out of the penultimate corner yeah it was turn 30 he looks like he's spun. We'll, we'll talk you through it as soon as we get a replay, and here it comes. But he's on his own. He's got nobody in front of him. He's on a clear track. He goes into turn 13. The left-hander, just as he gets on the throttle, in almost slow motion, the back end just drifts round, and he pirouettes and ends up facing the same way. Wow, the uh, rear wheels lighting up uh, and smoke billowing off the tyres there. He gets going again, but it's a really tricky rejoin because Perez and Russell are right there fighting. Leclerc would have been smiling when he saw that one through. A rare mistake from Verstappen, or is, it there, is there a bit more drizzle coming down in that part of the track? Well, either way, it's a huge let off from Leclerc, isn't it? Because Verstappen had already found his way past on the faster medium tyre. Leclerc playing a slightly longer game here on the harder tyre, having to get to the end, but with less performance. Max Verstappen potentially having to nurse his way around this racetrack and find his way to the end, hopefully in front.
as his teammate comes into the pit lane. Second then mistake, on track mistake from Max Verstappen this year after uh, the Spanish Grand Prix in Barcelona uh, a few uh, well, months ago now. But Perez coming out of the pits, nice quick stop for him. He feeds out into some clean air signs, leads from Hamilton at the moment, Jenny. Yeah, Norris pitted as well to go on to another set of the tyres. Interesting though, isn't it? The Stappen pitted lap 39. It's on those medium tyres, which are going to be a challenge to keep alive anyway to the end of this race. And now with a nasty flat spot on them potentially, going to be even harder to keep them alive. And Leclerc is just going to be hunting him down. Russell's got a sniff of it as well. This is a great battle. You couldn't write it, could you? You absolutely couldn't. It, it, we knew it might be a corker, but the strategy game has been so fascinating uh, here for round 13 of the uh, Formula One World Championship here in Hungary, coming to the end. Uh, we're on lap 44. Verstappen, though, has managed to close up to the back of the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, coming through the final corner now. He's just under seven tenths of a second back. He will get DRS. The slot in the rear wing opens up. Suddenly, a lot more straight line speed is available to you. Half a second the gap. Leclerc looks in his uh, rear view in his right mirror and Verstappen late on the brakes but not quite close enough on that occasion but it's coming back for Verstappen. Yeah Verstappen of course has lost that brand new tyre advantage when he did this first time around. He's still got a quicker a quicker tyre but now we've got Leclerc with his tyres up to temperature those harder tyres that take longer to come in. They're now in the right sweet spot. Verstappen's got a tougher job this time around to get by the red Ferrari. Sides still leading out in front, four seconds the gap to Lewis Hamilton. They haven't uh, yet come in for their second pit stop. They're still running on that uh, medium compound tyre. So Leclerc holding on with the hard tyre, which so far up and down the grid hasn't really been the tyre of choice, the slower of the tyres, and he's managed to skate through on Verstappen due to Max Verstappen's uh, spin coming out of the penultimate corner. But the sound you're hearing is riding on board with the uh, Dutchman, the Red Bull of Verstappen who is closing, but he's uh, not quite close enough through the 90-degree right-hander of turn number 12 into the penultimate left-hand sweeper, the scene of the crime for Max Verstappen. A bit tentative, perhaps on throttle. He makes his way out the rear. Does look a little bit unsteady coming out of the exit of that corner into the right-hand final corner now. Turn number 14. He'll get DRS, so he should just about... Yes, he does. The uh, rear wing slot opens up once more. How close this time can he get? Leclerc moves over to the right-hand side to defend. Late on the brakes for Stafford, he goes deep, tucks back under, gets to the outside, that becomes the inside and he's through on Charles Leclerc for third place already into the braking zone of turn number two. DRS aided with that, but Verstappen nice and tidy from the Dutchman. Yeah, so the spin made him do it all over again. It was harder work this time around, but he's back in front. And this could well be really key in the battle for this race win, because out front it's Science and Hamilton still to make another stop. That's going to put this battle of Leclerc and Verstappen at the lead of the race. And it could well be that both of these cars go all the way to the end. We fully expect the Ferrari to go to the end. Can Max Verstappen get that medium tyre all the way to the end of the race and still, crucially, in front of Charles Leclerc? Verstappen just got so much better traction coming out of Turn 1. He just absolutely wiped the floor with Leclerc. But how long is it going to last? That's, That's the question. question, isn't it? Well, lap 45 uh, ending, starting lap number but 46 of 70 as Carlos Sainz currently leads 2.7 seconds the gap to Lewis Hamilton either have not come into the pits for another stop yet they're running the medium compound tyre I think they will need to come in for another stop Verstappen then is third he's about 10 seconds behind the front two at the moment then Leclerc, Russell, Perez, Ricardo, Stroll, Norris, Vettel the top 10 Alonso, Ocon, Gasly, Bottas, Joe the top 15 Schumacher, Magnussen, Latifi, Sonoda and Albon the top 20 it's interesting stuff, isn't it? Fascinating. At the moment, if Carlos Sainz were to pit from the lead of this race, he'd come out behind George Russell. There's a big gap between Russell and ahead of Sergio Perez. That's the gap that both he and Hamilton would slot into if they are to make their pit stops around now. It's going to take some work to start getting a, a big enough gap to get ahead of there. I don't think they've got the performance, quite frankly, at the moment to do that. So that's, I think, where they're going to come out. Hello, Jesus. Hello, 
It's Max Verstappen reiterating the light drizzles around this track. Let's see if that develops into anything more. But first, uh, updates from the men's T20 England versus South Africa. Nagesh Raghani. Yeah, South Africa batting first. They lost the first wicket in the very first over of the day. They then put on a 55 partnership thanks to Riley Russo, who made 96 in the previous game, and Reza Hendricks. But Russo, after smashing a couple of lovely shots off Chris Jordan, has been dismissed by Moen Ali, who clean bowled him through the gate. So South Africa now at two down. We're out of the power play as well, into the seventh over. Hendricks is still there, South Africa 56 for two. Don't forget as well, it's a big weekend of sport today. Uh, Women's Euros final, England versus Germany. The Lionesses in the final at Wembley, uh, and that all gets going. Kickoff at five o'clock with uh, build up from four o'clock across BBC Radio 5 Live. Right now, though, it is the Hungarian Grand Prix, round 13, the last before the Formula One summer shutdown. It's lap 47 of 70, and a fantastic strategic battle playing out here across this Hungara. And Carlos Sainz currently leads from Lewis Hamilton. The gap 2.1 seconds the front two have yet to come in for another pit stop then comes max verstappen who's been fighting his way up from a 10th place starting position on the medium compound tire but he's had a spin how long will those tires be able to last then comes leclerc he's opted for the hard compound tire a bit of a left wing strategy there but put just about 2.2 seconds behind Verstappen. Russell is fifth, having started on pole. Perez, Norris, Ricardo, Stroll, Fernando Alonso is now up into the top 10, but a pit stop just taking place for Daniel Ricardo, who uh, nice and tidy, 2.2 seconds. He is out as Carlos Sainz is finally told by the Ferrari team to box this lap. Yeah, so Carlos Sainz coming into the pits. He's gonna come out when he emerges from the pit lane behind George Russell. Jenny, here he comes. Yeah, so he dashes into his pit box. 22 men lift the car up. They change all four tyres. It looks like a sticky slow stop. It's taking forever to get out of there. It's very slow at the moment. I can't see the exact timing, but a slow slot for Sainz. Where is he going to slot that into? 4.6 seconds. That's a howler. 4.6 seconds, it's not good for Carlos Sainz. Where does that feed him out though? The two Hasses make their way through and can he just get in front of Kevin Magnussen? He's on the inside line, he gets through on the Haas, so he manages to clear one Haas, but Carlos Sainz has switched to the soft compound tire for the end of this race, the faster tire, but it just looked like he was late to be released there from the uh, pit stop. We'll have to get another look at why that was a bit slow. Uh, meanwhile, further back in the pack, Lance Stroll fighting with the McLaren, and that was the reason for the yellow flag there. Lando Norris going around the outside, Side. I gave him plenty of room. Hey, we saw, mate. Get going. Get going. Get Hit me. Yeah, we saw. Take damage. It was Lance Stroll going Frank around. Frank through. Right, get back into the rhythm. Doesn't. That was Lance Stroll going around the outside of Ricardo there and Stroll spinning around. We're now getting a look at the slow spit, uh, pit stop from Carlos Sainz and it was the rear left mark slow to go on. Yeah, it was. It's been a, a feature of this race, hasn't it? A series of slow pit stops. We're on lap 49 of 70, so 21 laps still to go in this race on a soft tyre now for Carlos Sainz. That's a tall order because at the beginning of the race, don't forget, around lap 12, 13, 14, the first signs of degradation, heavy degradation, were starting to creep in. Yes, the cars are lighter now they've got less fuel on board but that's still going to be a bit of a tough ask and by the last few laps Carlos Sainz is going to be struggling with that one and it looks like the longer Lewis Hamilton stays out at the moment he is still leading 5.8 seconds the gap expecting him uh, to come in and right now he's still to pit but it looks like he might be able to get Carlos Sainz after that slow pit stop we'll see how that one unfolds Sainz now running in fifth 8.4 seconds off the back of Russell and I tell the other interesting thing for the last few laps it's been Max Verstappen and banging in laps that have been even a second faster than Charles Leclerc. That is now starting to come down. So maybe the tyres of Verstappen just starting to lose that ultimate performance that the medium tyre has. And it's just starting to fall more in line with the harder tyre and the lap times coming from that Ferrari. So I just wonder whether Max Verstappen may still have to make another pit stop here. Do a blitz on the last few laps of this race on a soft tyre in the hope that he can find his way back past again. 
The uh, battles continue further back in the pack and on the fringes of the points, Daniel Ricciardo in 11th in the McLaren ahead of the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll, who is desperate to find a way through on the McLaren here around the final corner. DRS open for the Canadian racer Lance Stroll, who's just had a bit of a coming together with Ricciardo. They both carry on their way. And this time, though, Stroll with a clean move down the inside into turn one makes his stick on Daniel Ricciardo as his teammate Sebastian Vettel gets ahead of the Alfa Romeo uh, of Joe Guadagnino new in that battle for 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th. Jenny. 21 laps still to go of this race, which must seem like a very long time if you're Carlos Sainz and you've just been put onto that soft tyre, as you say. But Hamilton doing a wonderful job out there right now. He came in on lap 20 to go onto the medium tyres. He's making them last a long time. The longer he can make them last, I don't think he can eke it out to a one stop, but if he can make them last longer, go onto the soft tyre and get all racy at the end of this, what could happen for Hamilton? That's the question. What could happen? What could happen if a safety car comes out or a virtual safety car in these last 20 or so laps uh, amazingly all 20 runners still going strong without a few skirmishes a few spins and a few front wings breaking off but no retirements as of yet lap 50 hamilton leads verstappen leclerc russell signs the top five perez with the fastest lap in sick norris alonso ocon bottas the top 10. Yeah, you're right. It's been a relatively clean race, hasn't it? For such a tight and twisty circuit where we often see so much chaos, it's been relatively clean. But it does mean with all 20 runners still on track, there's a lot of traffic now for the front runners starting to find their way through as Daniel Ricciardo gets a five second penalty with that collision with Lance Stroll. Yeah, at the moment that would uh, put him back a fair few positions. He's still currently outside the points. It was a pretty bad start for Daniel Ricciardo uh, in the opening laps, falling out of the top 10 pretty much straight away as uh, Lewis Hamilton and Carlos Sainz fight further up. The other Ferraris are fighting tooth and nail as well. And George Russell fighting with Carlos Sainz and Sainz gets through on Russell coming into uh, turn two. So it's Leclerc who gets through. Sainz chasing them behind. Leclerc now through and ready to chase down Max Verstappen. Leclerc, reminder on that hard compound tyre, now able to get through on George Russell. who will have Carlos Sainz on the back of him in about six seconds time. Yeah, Carlos, uh, Carlos Sainz making use of that red wall soft tyre. He's got the performance at the moment, but can it see him right through to the end of the race? We're still 19 laps to go. That'll be the big question on their minds. So it's Sainz in fifth, Russell fourth, Leclerc third. It's Max Verstappen in second on a medium tyre. And Lewis Hamilton, having just made one stop, currently leads this race. We fully expect him to have to come in. In fact, we know he has to come in again. Which tyre is he going to go for? Here he is. Here comes the call, Jenny. He's on his way in. Yeah, it certainly is. The Silver Arrow flashes past me and he just slams on the brakes. The pit stop just to the right of me. So let's see what they can do this time around. A little bit of paper flutters around in the strong breeze here as they do the hold. And it looks like a decent stop for Mercedes as they get Hamilton back out on track. He comes out on the soft compound tyre. Where does he feed out as his teammate uh, George Russell closes right up to the back of Charles Leclerc once more in the battle now for second place. Hamilton coming out of the pit lane now. Looks like he's got a clean run at it into turn one, feeding out in fifth place behind Carlos Sainz's Ferrari. So Leclerc in second, but George Russell is fighting back here. He really closed on the DRS through the left-hander of turn four now into the tricky middle sector. Turn number five. A long right hand sweeper, which brings you into the rundown of the right left chicane. Unlikely to make a move there. Leclerc has it in hand for the moment ahead of Russell, then signs, then Hamilton, the top five. Yeah, so Leclerc under pressure now from the Mercedes of Russell. Only in the last few laps are we going to really see whether, whether Ferrari have got this right by pitting Charles Leclerc and putting him on the harder tyre. Is that performance going to last till the end, whereas others start to fall away? It's going to be a fascinating conclusion to this Grand Prix, and we don't know quite yet where it's going to go. Verstappen leads the race from Hamilton, from Leclerc, and then George Russell, but there's not much between them. There really is it. The uh, approach to the final corner now. Pit lane entry to your right. Leclerc and Russell carry on round the final corner. Russell six tenths the gap. It's going to come down with DRS onto the main straight. We go. The Silver Arrow fighting back on the scarlet red Ferrari. Closing up under straight line speed. Has a little look down the inside. Leclerc covers it off into turn one. Russell having to sweep round the outside. Tries the up and under but gets a little bit uh, squiggly on the way out. Enough though to carry forward and get right onto the rear of Leclerc. Coming into the left-hander of turn two. Takes quite a lot of that inside curving as well. Sets him 
him off lying slightly and Leclerc carries on ahead of Russell for now, second and third. Yeah, we're getting a real interesting picture here of the different phases of these tyres, aren't we? It's now Russell who's in the ascendancy. He's now got the performance in that car. Charles Leclerc just trying to manage his to the end. A difficult tyre, the hard tyre in these conditions, and it's going to be interesting to see if George Russell can get by. Well, that could really, really hurt Charles Leclerc's race. But out front is Verstappen. Hamilton, of course, after the pit stop, drops back down to now fifth place. So it's Verstappen, Leclerc, Russell, Sainz, and then Hamilton, the top five. Let's get a rugby league update now. Salford Red Devils versus St. Helens with Dave Woods. 14 minutes played and Salford are leading the league leaders by six points to nil. Thoroughly deserved. Sita Akwala at the end of some enterprising home play by the Red Devils. Sneed has kicked the goal. It's Salford six, St. Helens nil. There we go then, ending uh, lap 50, starting lap 54, Leclerc still in front of George Russell in this battle for second, but DRS open for George Russell, he tries to look down the inside, Leclerc covers him off, it's the approach of turn one, late on the brakes, Russell slams down, tries to get around the outside, Leclerc goes late as well, but it's not enough, Russell gets through on Leclerc on the exit of turn one, gets DRS to boot, safely through into turn two, Russell up into second, ahead of Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, down to third. Yeah, that's going to hurt Leclerc's race here. That really is. He didn't need that at all. He needs to clear track in front of him. He needs to be able to put his foot down and start eking out the performance of this long-range hard wall, a hard tyre with a white band on it. But it's Russell that made a really strong move around the outside, late, late, late on the brakes, and the extra grip of those medium tyres allowing him to hang on to it. And uh, the Ferrari garage uh, not looking uh, too happy about that one. They're third and fourth at the moment. Leclerc and Sainz having started second and third. Still a fascinating race to unfold because Jenny Charles Leclerc has been told to box box. Well, I've got my eyes looking down the pit lane. Yes, the team coming out at Ferrari, so he'll have to come in for a box. Box, as you say, darker here as well. The wind picking up again. I just wonder if we're going to get any more serious kinds of rain. We're only getting a few spits and spots at the moment. Nothing significant. So in comes Leclerc. Brakes. Gets ready to come into his pit stop. He's on those hard tyres. He wants rid of those. Are they going to put a nice soft tyre on there and let him get all racy? I would expect so. They lift him up. Put on those tyres. Tires, pop him down, decent stop from them, it's the soft tyres for Leclerc, he's back out now. Oof. Tidy stop, 2.6 seconds as well for the uh, Ferrari pit crew. Where does that feed him out though? The Red Bull of Perez goes through. I think there might be a bit of lap traffic as well. Might be a Williams skates through. He does, the Latifi gets through. So it's not ideal for Leclerc. He's slot in between the two Williams drivers of Latifi and Albon, who uh, have been lapped. Here's Hamilton at risk of light rain in two laps but it shouldn't last long don't tease us lewis hamilton on the radio with his engineers telling him maybe there might be some light rain in a couple of laps time we're on lap 55 of 70 leclerc has just made another pit stop this is not going the way of ferrari they were given a bit of a get out of thrill uh, get out of jail, jail free card in qualifying with verstappen all the way down in 10 but now verstappen is in the lead and ferrari third with signs leclerc down to six yes he's on that faster tire but how much ground can he make up now no i'll go even harder than that this is a disaster for ferrari that was an open goal that was left for Ferrari after yesterday's qualifying. The two Red Bulls completely out of the picture in 10th and 11th. The two Ferraris with the faster car. Let's not forget around this racetrack, just George Russell and Mercedes ahead of him. And look what's happened. Now Verstappen leads this race. Russell second. The Ferraris are third and sixth. This is a total disaster. And they've got to do better than this. Too many times this season have we seen mistakes from strategy. We said we wouldn't get the answer to whether Ferrari had called it right with that hard tire until later in the race. We got the answer and they got it wrong. What Verstappen has done to be in the lead of this race he might well have to make another pit stop, but at the moment, because he's, he's looking decent out there, the lap times aren't terrible, even with that spin that he had just a few laps to go, which would have certainly uh, put a lot of stress on all four tires. Uh, Verstappen up from 10th to 1st, uh, it's, it's a bit of a masterclass from the reigning champ. Yeah, but his main competition's fallen away. He's got no real challenge now. Russell's 8.6 seconds back, and I don't think really has a car that's capable of challenging Verstappen going wheel to wheel. So I think Verstappen, he has to manage the tires of course he's got to look after them don't forget he doesn't need to win this race in terms of the championship but if he 
can win it, if he can finish ahead of the Ferraris, well, this could even be game over for Ferrari. A further pain for Daniel Ricciardo in the McLaren, further down the field, he just gets pipped for 13th place by the Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly. A rugby league time now, Salford Red Devils versus St. Helens, an update from Dave Woods. Lap 57 of 70, Verstappen, 8.5 seconds clear ahead of Russell, Sainz, Hamilton, Perez, the top five, Leclerc, Norris, Alonso, Ocon, Bottas, the top 10, Stroll, Vettel, Gasly, Ricardo, Schumacher, the top 15, Magnussen, Latifi, Albon, Joe and Sonoda, the 20 runners in this race. Uh, still all in it, no safety cars, no virtual safety cars, no retirement. This race has unfolded and been a fascinating game of strategy, tyre man management and on-track maneuvers and Verstappen at the moment despite that mistake still lead well now into the lead and uh, that gap really coming slightly down from Russell it's getting it's nip and tuck Jenny yeah just thinking about that Red Bull it looks so good out there we heard earlier Verstappen saying he was having issues with the car it didn't feel right but that seems to have sorted itself out remember overnight Red Bull decided to change the power units of both cars no penalty for them to do that but I just wonder is their second power unit is a fresh power unit if that's giving them even more of an advantage out there to try and be able to win this race Ferrari just don't seem to have the pace and they don't seem to have the strategy calls up their sleeve either how much is it though, Mark, just the cars don't have the pace and how much is it they've made yet another poor strategy call? Yeah, I'd say the Ferrari's the faster car. I think they've got the strategy completely wrong. I'm sorry to go so hard on the team. I hate to do that. I know how difficult it is to make these calls under the pressure they're under, but they're doing it too often. If they've got any hope of winning a championship, they need to do better. Let's look at the gap right now. Verstappen's out front. Leclerc is 31 seconds back from his main title rival. Verstappen can make another free pit stop and still come out ahead of him if he wants to. And that, well, is the writing on the wall. You can't, the numbers don't lie. Verstappen, well, with an 8.8 .8 second gap over Russell, and as you say, over 30 seconds back to Leclerc, even with a pit stop, which is around about 20 seconds, he'll still come out in front of him if he has to, but he's on that medium compound tire. Leclerc on the fastest soft tire down in sixth, but also, even if he gets up to the back of the next car, it's Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. So we think tires will be fine to the end. And Russell being told on his medium tyres, which has been going about 18 laps now, should be fine till the end, lap 58 of 70, Jenny. Poncho time though, people opposite me in the grandstand starting to put their ponchos on, one of the FIA bosses has just got himself an umbrella and he's holding that in case he needs it, the wind picking up again, oh my word, could this throw another little change about to happen the wind is still very much uh, flowing you can see the flags in the grandstands absolutely billowing out there as well at 59 now 70 we've just seen very interesting images of the ferrari team principal mattia bonotto uh, getting up off of uh, the pit wall and marching through the garage and out the back so clearly all not well down at ferrari and particularly uh, with mattia bonotto he can't face watching what's unfolding signs is 1.9 seconds off the back of george russell in third Leclerc is sixth place at the moment and he's coming up to the back of Perez but as I was just alluding to before Perez is naturally Verstappen's teammate he's not going to let it be anywhere near as easy letting Leclerc through as it was he letting his own teammate yeah you're absolutely right and that interesting message to George Russell from his engineer to say those medium tires on the Mercedes should be good to go to the end of the race that's good news it's good news for Verstappen as well because we've got the same tire on that Red Bull car and just looking at the lap times the lap times of the medium runners so Verstappen George Russell had a slightly slower lap last time out but if we come back one to the soft shod runners of Carlos Sainz he's in the same sort of lap time so the performance has completely gone from the Ferrari soft tyres that they would have had when they first came out of the pits they're now into a phase of nursing that to the end of the Grand Prix so at the moment it looks like Lewis Hamilton's a man on a charge but out front Max Verstappen and George Russell sitting reasonably comfortably dare I say it well, lap 60 of 70 then, just over 10 laps to go. Uh, let's get an update. Uh, Rugby League, Salford Red Devils, St. Helens, Dave Wood's got the updates. 22 minutes played, Salford leads 16 nil. They just hit St. Helens with a double in three minutes. Joe Burgess scoring in the corner. Dan Sargison finishing an 80-yard break as well. Salford deserving this. They're on top. They lead St. Helens 16 nil. 
Lap 60 of 70 of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Verstappen leads 8.8 seconds from George Russell in the Mercedes. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari is third ahead of Hamilton. Perez, the top five. Leclerc is in sixth ahead of Norris in seventh. The two Alpines, Alonso ahead of Ocon, eighth and ninth. Bottas rounds out the top 10 at the moment and what has been a fascinating Hungarian Grand Prix strategically. Jenny Gao is down in the pits for us. Yeah, as it stands, Verstappen leading this race will collect 25 points. He'd be on 258 points in the championship. Leclerc, eight points. He'd be on 178 points. That's a gap of 80 points. You heard that right. 80 point advantage for Verstappen going into the summer break with nine races left to go if it ends like this. And that is not the news that, well, we particularly want to hear, but certainly Ferrari won't want to be looking at either. Signs is the lead car at the moment, but it's the wrong way round. They needed a Claire up there, and their strategy, once again, has not worked favorably for Charles Leclerc, as Verstappen starts to extend that gap ever so slightly over George Russell, now nearly at 10 seconds. Signs third, Hamilton fourth, Perez in fifth. Yeah, and Hamilton it could well still take that final podium spot from Carlos Sainz. Ferrari could end up going home almost empty-handed here without even a podium from locking out second and third on the grid, having a car that was arguably the fastest of anybody in most conditions around this racetrack. It's been a disaster. How does Russell Tires look? Important to know. Some front abrasion for him, but uh, safe to the end, they say. Also, our tires are healthy. Tires healthy for Carlos Sainz, also asking about George Russell's tires in front of him and then just feeding them back what they've heard and what we've also heard and that Mercedes saying Russell's tires are good to the end as well as Hamilton is now within under a second of Carlos Sainz. They'll have DRS, a few nice fights developing further down, 10th, 11th and 12th, Bottas, Stroll and Vettel shaping up very nicely indeed. Naturally, we're focusing on this battle for the final podium placing. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari currently occupies it in in third but Lewis Hamilton has been catching him for the last couple of laps ever since his most recent pit stop to get onto that soft compound tire he's got the fastest lap around the final corner they go and across the line Hamilton should have DRS here he does the rear wing flat opens he tries to get in the slipstream DRS plus a bit of toe off the back of the scarlet red Ferrari Sainz has a little think about defending the inside moves his car ever so slightly Hamilton not close enough into turn one he gets another shot at it with DRS down into turn two again has another look down the inside signs his ferrari is there that means hamilton has to go around the outside but he's still not far enough along the side <laughs> no it's a tense battle this one both on the red wall soft tires both of them got to see this of course through to the end of the grand prix but it's hamilton on the ascendancy it's hamilton who has the most grip being held up right now by the lead ferrari of carlos Sainz battling over this third position. It's going to be fascinating. Lewis Hamilton currently with the fastest lap of the race. They've got traffic in front of them as well, coming into this tight, twisty middle sector. So uh, Carlos Sainz will be hoping that the traffic, the lapped cars in front, get out the way as swiftly as possible and that they can get through without losing too much time. But Hamilton through that middle sector, able to get within half a second. It's an Alpha Tauri that's in front of the Carlos Sainz Ferrari. He does get out the way very nicely coming into the penultimate corner and there through the left-hand sweeper signs followed by Hamilton who will be lining up for a move now he takes a much tighter line coming into the final corner it's a little bit traction heavy for Hamilton who's able to get right onto the back of signs he moves across to the inside but already halfway down the main straight Lewis Hamilton is through on Carlos Sainz to take his spot on the podium as Toto Wolff celebrates in the Mercedes garage Hamilton up to third and scoots away now from Carlos Sainz relegated in his Ferrari down to fourth yeah, good move from Hamilton. He set it up a couple of corners before he got onto that start-finish straight. Just building and building and building, getting closer and closer, exiting the final corner right underneath the rear wing of the Ferrari. It didn't take him very long the moment that rear wing opened up under DRS to find his way past. I wonder, could there be a tiny twist left at the end of this Grand Prix as the rain starts to sprinkle down? I've just seen a radar image that shows a big, dark cloud heading for the circuit. But will it be one of those that affects everybody during pack-up or is it going to be one of those that's going to affect the last few laps of the race?
Well, that would really turn things on its head in these last few laps of the Hungarian Grand Prix. We just saw a replay of the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll getting through for 10th spot on Sebastian Vettel, the Alfa Romeo, I should say, who's now lost out as well to uh, the Sebastian Vettel Aston Martin. So the Aston Martin's 10th, 11th, Bottas in 12th, just outside of the points. The battle up front continues to rage on. This time, though, it's between the two Mercedes drivers. George Russell has fallen into the clutches of his seven-time world champion teammate Lewis Hamilton on the brakes into turn one. Hamilton closes right up behind his young new teammate for this year. Lewis Hamilton with all of his years of experience negotiates the traffic of the Alfa Romeo into turn two. Russell takes the tighter line. Hamilton sweeps round taking a much wider line carrying more momentum through the right-hander of turn three into the elevation change and the approach of the left hand. Quick corner of turn four. The two silver the arrow is line of stern, but Russell is coming under pressure here. Of course, Russell is on the slower medium compound tyre. Yeah, this is one of those that I think the team could just let play out. They can trust their two drivers to race fairly. There's no real advantage in swapping the two. I don't think there's any real hope of Lewis Hamilton catching Max Verstappen. There's a, a 10 second gap between Russell and Verstappen, but that's a long way with just six laps to go on a tyre that's going to rapidly start to lose performance. So this is a battle that we can enjoy. The team will be nervous about, but George Russell will not want to give up that second place easily. What a turnaround for Mercedes this weekend. You started and came into Friday and Saturday really down B, almost down and out. They weren't expecting to be in the fight for a pole position, yet alone a win, yet alone a podium. Yet here they are in second and third. Coming onto the main straight though, it is Lewis Hamilton that seems to have the slight upper hand at the moment. He'll have DRS on the back of Russell. He closes up on the main straight. Russell moves to the inside to defend. Hamilton late on the brakes round the outside, swoops back to the inside line, clips the apex, traction heavy, and he's through on his teammate George Russell, Lewis Hamilton started seventh. He's up into second. Russell started on pole position. He's down to third. Jenny. Yeah, but the rain's coming down now. It's heavier. It's heavier and it's coming down. Hamilton's tyres were 11 laps fresher. He's whizzed off into the sunset, but we've still got five laps of this left. Is this rain going to affect things? Because it's certainly coming down even heavier now. And just an, under an hour and a half until the start of the England Germany match in the Euros as well. My excitement levels can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> it is really getting towards the uh, clincher now. Lap 65 of laps of 70 laps at the Hungaroring for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Hamilton is now in second place, 10.9 seconds the gap to Max Verstappen, but rain starting to fall in what has already been a fascinating strategic battle of a race. Verstappen first, Hamilton second, Russell in third, then comes Sainz, Perez the top five, Leclerc, Norris, Alonso, Ocon and Lance Stroll the top ten with five laps to go. Sebastian Vettel, his teammate, is once again hounding Lance Stroll for a final points paying position. This is where they were at the French Grand Prix last weekend they even came close to touching coming out of the final corner Lance Stroll won out on that occasion at the moment he is winning out to clinch that final point all of Lance Stroll's points paying positions so far this year have been 10th place positions so he clearly loves that spot I'm sure we'll be hoping for a few more points but at the moment that is where the two Aston Martins are fighting yeah that's right we've got a couple of inter-team battles haven't we we've got uh, the two Aston Martins fighting we've got the two uh, Alpines next to each other in racetrack the two Mercedes of course just seen a really intense battle battle for second and third up front as well so yeah the rain is the one to keep an eye on nobody inside the top 10 is going to want to make a stop obviously at this point but will it come to a point where they have to we've seen that happen in the past before think about that moment when Lando Norris refused to pit ruined his opportunity for a race win Lewis Hamilton made the right call and went on to take that one so everybody keeping an eye on the clouds as we speak the tension is palpable especially in that Ferrari garage we just saw a uh, riding on board with Charles Leclerc making a switch on his steering wheel to mode race of lap 66 uh, coming to an end as Max Verstappen makes his way around the final corner in that Red Bull to make it another lap gone by 67 of 70 so close to the end of this race Ken Verstappen well he's got a, a long uh, a lot of gap time to Lewis Hamilton but these inter-team battles playing out nicely I think the next big threat is going to be from the weather and it's just looking to get a little bit greyer out there I'm just thinking Max Verstappen not only started in 10th place to now be leading the race in the closing laps he's also had a spin <laughs> and he's still leading by a country mile what a race he's almost bulletproof this man it's 
it's been a sensational race from Max Verstappen, who you, you almost half ruled out for the win, starting down in 10. The Hungaroring, statistically, very, very difficult to overtake on, but to make his way up from 10th with the strategy calls he's made and the team have made, but the mistakes as well, it emphasizes uh, how brilliant they have worked to get himself into that lead and looks set to extend his championship uh, to a mighty haul over Charles Leclerc as uh, we get a replay of the two Aston Martins. Now, have they been told uh, to play the team game there? It looks like Vettel like getting it, past it? Lance Stroll into the penultimate corner, but Stroll didn't really put up too much of a fight on it that one. It looked like he waved him through on that occasion. Um, let's hear from Alonso. Expecting rain on the last lap, he's just been told. <laughs> well, you couldn't write it, could you? I mean, nobody's going to make a pit stop if it just comes down on the last lap, but it could make some very, very entertaining moments as everyone tiptoes their way, way around with three laps to go. And uh, up and down the team uh, pit walls, they're sticking their hands out, looking for the rain, though, but there's an Alfa Romeo pulling off the track, and it's Valtteri Bottas. Uh, no, uh, no power, no power. Copy. No power for the Alfa Romeo of Valtteri Bottas on lap 68. He's pulled off the track, but he is a little bit in the firing line. The fans can't believe it. They're looking on in awe. Bottas steering wheel off. I think that's got and to be a safety out. car. I think that's got to be a safety car. He is just on the. I mean, he's in the. He's in one of the most dangerous position. They can't continue to race with that car stuck there. I mean, I hate to say it, this race could actually finish under safety car, couldn't it? Oh, after being virtual, teased virtual about uh, rain on that last lap, it's a virtual safety car, Jenny. Yeah, this is good stuff, though, because the rain is coming down. We're on lap 68 of 70, and the rain is coming down more heavily now. This is going to affect the run of play. These guys are going to have to hold on to their Formula 1 cars like they've never gripped anything before to try and keep it on track. This is perilous. It is perilous as Bottas makes his way out of his Alfa Romeo. He's parked up on the exit of turn 11, the fast right-hand sweeper in the middle sector. So it is a dangerous position for that car to be in. I've got to say, I'm rightly. surprised it wasn't a safe, a full safety car. There's marshals on the circuit now with cars going around. Of course, they're going around slowly, but how good would that have been to have the pack closed up with a lap or two to go? Not to be, though. The virtual safety car does the job as the marshals clear that out of the way and we'll get racing again, I imagine, very, very quickly. Well, they all slow down to a set delta displayed on their steering wheel. Here's Leclerc. Is the car all okay? Stand by. Leclerc asking if his car is okay. And Ferrari telling him to stand by. Trouble, I was going to say in paradise, but it hasn't well, been for Leclerc today. Let's not forget that that Alfa Romeo, of course, has a Ferrari power unit in it. They've just stopped with a loss of power. And I don't want to jinx anybody out on circuit right now, but uh, that is a trend we've seen a few times this season. Lap 69 of 70 under virtual safety car conditions. Verstappen leads ahead of Lewis Hamilton, George Russell, the top three. Then it's Sainz, Perez, the top five. Leclerc, Norris, Alonso, Ocon, Vettel currently with the final point in 10th position. From data, everything looks fine. Charles Leclerc being given the all clear on his Ferrari. 11th is Stroll, Gasly, 12th, Ricardo, Schumacher, Joe, the top 15, Magnussen, Albon, Latifi, Sonoda, the 19 drivers left in this race as Valtteri Bottas, the reason for this virtual safety car, pulling off on the exit of 11, causing this virtual safety car, which is now ending. Yeah, here we go then. Just over a lap and a half to go with Max Verstappen leading the race, having started 10th. It's Hamilton in second and George Russell behind him. It's raining hard at the moment. Copy that. And George Russell saying it's raining hard while Fernando Alonso was told that it might well end on the last lap with a huge amount of rain and a downpour here in Hungary. We're only about 12 miles northeast of Budapest and it has been an absolute cracker of a Hungaroring strategy at the forefront here. And it's Max Verstappen at the moment who started down in 10th place, has worked his way up to lead this race ahead of Hamilton and Russell. But there's fairly even gaps at the moment and the rain coming down well, we need a little bit of a closer look at what part of the track it is because there's not too much slip and sliding going on. Yeah, they're managing so far with just, as they start the final lap, in fact. This was supposed to be damage limitation for Red Bull and Max Verstappen, but he finds himself going into the final lap of the race in the lead with his main title protagonist rivals nowhere to be seen. Starting the final lap down into turn one.
goes Sergio Perez, who is uh, fighting for fifth place at the moment. He's in a little bit of no man's land. Actually, he's not. He's got Leclerc right on the back of him. Can Leclerc try and uh, skate up one more position in this final lap? Uh, Perez has not had the pace compared to his teammate all weekend long. Even Dr. Helmut Marco pointing that out. And you can see a little bit of the raindrops coming down in this first sector. But at the moment, Max Verstappen has managed the rain. He's managed the tyres and the strategy from Red Bull has paid off for the reigning champion and the man who currently leads the driver's standings. The Red Bull making its way now for the last time into the 90 degree right-hander of turn number 12. Max Verstappen, eight seconds the gap to Lewis Hamilton who looks set to pick up an extra point for the fastest lap as well if he can hold on to it and I think he will because the rain is starting to come down but Max Verstappen, the Dutchman, round the final corner he goes. He started 10th in Hungary. He takes the win in Hungary. Max Verstappen does it again. Eighth win of the season for the Dutchman. He waves and celebrates to the pit wall and Red Bull are on top in Hungary. Lewis Hamilton comes across the line to confirm second and the fastest lap with teammate George Russell rounding out the podium. It's a double podium for Mercedes. Second and third. Signs off the podium in fourth. Perez finishes in fifth. Leclerc down in sixth place ahead of Norris, Alonso, Ocon and Vettel, the top ten. Yeah, what an unbelievable race that was. Let's hear from our race winner, Max Verstappen, as he cruises round his in-lap, having done an unbelievable job today. Starting tenth position, and here he is on the radio. Ah, oh, mate, what a drive. What a way to finish the first half of the year. P10 to P1. Fantastic. Yes! Oh, what a race. I think we stayed calm and we won it. <laughs> Unbelievable, Max. That is right up there with your best. Unbelievable. Fantastic. Christian Amazing Horner. Amazing result. <laughs> Who would have thought when we woke up that we were, <laughs> we were going to win the race? <laughs> Unbelievable. Best way to go to the summer break and it doesn't feel anything like summer today, I tell you. Yeah, I think uh, we need to see the sun a bit. <laughs> Christian Horner and Max Verstappen chatting away then and Horner while well, describing it best uh, one of his best I think for Verstappen even with that mistake and that spin really damaging the tyres he still managed to hold on and pull the gap out too yeah it was a, ca a case of being patient and being calm and getting the strategy right and that's exactly what they did of course Max Verstappen executed perfectly too nice work Lewis that's P2 mate and fastest lap great work lads great work what a result for the team. So happy for you all and so grateful to you all. Let's keep pushing. This is super positive. Great recovery this weekend, mate. I agree. We would have had the place to win if we hadn't had that DRS issue. Back to back second places for Lewis Hamilton. Jenny. What could have been though for Ferrari, an absolute howler of a weekend after last weekend where Leclerc binned it. This time it's a strategy call that's been an absolute blunder. The points, it's now 80 points the advantage for Max Verstappen. It could have been down to 49 at one point when Leclerc had control of this race. Control totally gone for Ferrari. Yeah, what well a team. Sorry about that last didn't really struggled with the tyres uh, dropping off. Great job by Lewis. Come back through. Good racing up the bottom. And George Russell, uh, I don't, magnanimous, magnanimous in defeat doesn't seem quite the right phrase, but he would have been hoping, I think, to have uh, tried to go for a maiden win or at least convert it into a second, ultimately pipped by his teammate. But what a turnaround for Mercedes this yeah, weekend. Yeah, total turnaround. And, that, and you've got to give him huge credit for that because as a team, that's a strong result. Russell, there's a slight disappointment in his voice. You can tell that. He's finished third. That's not the biggest disappointment. The biggest disappointment will be that his teammate, who started way back in seventh, of course, has come through and beaten him on the day so a good team result but a tinge with a bit of disappointment for the man who started on pole and Verstappen's over the barrier saying congratulations to everybody his father there Jos as well Jenny the scenes down in part for me are, are spectacular yeah this is a good win for Max Verstappen as they said on the team radio coming back from 10th to make it to first to take the win and it feels like nobody else could ever have wrestled that away from him whatever was chucked at him with the rain coming down towards the end as well that was a Verstappen victory out and out.
As he uh, gets the obligatory way in there, Adrian Newey lurking in the background there, ready to congratulate as Lewis Hamilton runs over to the Mercedes team. Is uh, uh, physio Angela there as well? Smile on her face. Adrian Newey debriefed with Max Verstappen and uh, Sergio Perez with a, a perhaps a recovery drive to fifth as well, but uh, not quite uh, what the Mexican would have wanted in his Red Bull. But uh, they are still on top with Verstappen, Hamilton, and Russell rounding out the podium. And well, the first. Ferrari, the leading Ferrari, was Carlos Sainz in fourth in the end, off the podium, but it's Leclerc with the big, big loss there, 80 points the gap now in the driver's standings as we head into uh, what will feel like a very long summer break, I'm sure, for Ferrari and Charles Leclerc. It really will, and it matters, you know, going into a summer break like this, because I've been there, I've done it, I, I know what it feels like. If you finish the race on a positive, if you finish your first stint of the season on a high, you carry that through. If you don't, if you're on a low, as Ferrari will undoubtedly be today, that equally carries through. And look, Max Verstappen, he could have a, a two-month-long summer break, couldn't he? He could still come back and be the lead of this championship. The lead is so commanding, and I've got to say, whilst it's been a stunning job from Verstappen, I mean, he's been at a huge helping hand from Ferrari as a team, hasn't he? And uh, the uh, race uh, interviews uh, coming up shortly will be hosted by David Coulthard speaking to our top Max three. Max Verstappen, I did not expect to be interviewing you here as the winner of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Could you have believed it this morning? Not really. Um, I was, of course, hoping that I could get close to a podium, but uh, yeah, very tricky conditions out there, but I think we, we had a really good uh, strategy, you know, we were really reactive and always pitting at the right time. I think we had some good outlaps and then at the end, even with the 360, we, uh, we won the race. So. Tell us about that. Coming out of the second last corner, we heard you on the radio <laughs> saying that you just lost the rear. Tires should have yeah. been warm by that point. Yeah, so I was struggling a bit with, uh, with the shifts and the clutch and uh, we had to change a few things around that to not uh, basically burn the clutch. and. Uh, that costed a bit of performance, and I think that caught me out out of that uh, out of that corner. But uh, yeah, luckily could it, could do a 360, so I only lost one spot. Some good hard racing out there. A lot of respect in this championship. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, with a lot of, I, I was battling a lot of guys, so uh, it was a lot of fun out there. Down the inside, we're just seeing behind you here with Charles. His speed with the DRS just made it uh, your corner. He was in those hard tires, and yeah, uh, uh, he was struggling on the hard tires. So we had a good run out of the. <laughs> It's uh, heating up the rear tires. Yeah, That's spinning and winning is acceptable. <laughs> that could have been an, a painful experience otherwise. Yeah, uh, it was a crazy race and of course very happy that we won it. Well, Max, we know we're on the summer break now. I believe the Dutch are keen on camping. Are you going to be taking a caravan for a couple of weeks? Uh, I mean, uh, that's what a normal Dutch would do, right? So maybe we should get back to it. Okay, well, enjoy the summer break. Enjoy the victory. Lewis Hamilton. What a drive. This circuit has been very kind to you. Your first victory was here, that's your 11th podium. Where did the speed come from in the second half of that race? <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. Um, I was definitely struggling at the beginning of the race and wasn't sure whether I'd be able to catch the guys up. But bit by bit, got a bit more comfortable with the balance. Had a really good start as well. Um, I really want to acknowledge my team who have continued to, to push, never give up. Uh, through this tough year that we've had so far for us to be on the podium uh, both cars to be on the podium twice is pretty special for us and um, really unlucky for George today you know the other guys still have a bit of an edge but we're clearly closing the gap and this is just an amazing way to go into the break knowing that we have this performance hopefully we'll bring some more into the second part of the season and start fighting with the guys at the front. Is it significant that the cooler conditions of qualifying and the cooler conditions of the race came into a window for the Mercedes car? I definitely think being a little bit cooler, it seemed to work a little bit better for us. I can't tell you exactly why, but grateful for it. I was hoping it was going to rain at the end so I could challenge, challenge Max, but we ran out of laps. So um, would have been a bit of a better qualifying if the DRS was okay yesterday. We would have been in the run for the win. So, um, but either, either way, two seconds in a row, I'm really, really happy. So huge thank you to the fans for all the amazing support. Um, enjoy your summer. Bless you guys. Lewis, I, I can't help but notice your suit is torn just near your elbow. Have you been in the, uh, the wars in your cockpit? Uh, that's probably just banging against the side of the cockpit. I don't really, never seen that before. I've never seen but that before. My, my arms are okay, so. <laughs> Good stuff. Anything you're going to be doing specifically in the summer break? Uh, of course, yeah, just training, 
refocusing, recentered, and making sure we come back strong in this second half. Lewis, congratulations. And finally, our poll setter from yesterday. The dream didn't quite become a reality, George, but that's still a solid result on the podium. For 30 laps, you led that Grand Prix. Yeah, it was a... Um, when it started spitting at the beginning, we were on the soft tyres. I thought we were, we were on and we obviously made a really strong start. It was a good first stint. And then towards the end on the medium, then the rain started to come down. Uh, really struggled and losing a bit of temperature. But again, amazing job by the team. Pole position yesterday, double podium. We're definitely making progress. So I'm um, really proud of the work everybody's done. Yeah, there just wasn't enough pace there in the latter stages on the tyres. Anything else you feel you could have improved on personally during that Grand Prix? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot I'll, I'll look over and um, could have done better. It was challenging to manage the tyres. Obviously, we, we pitted quite early on both stints. So you're trying to eat the tyre out until the end, but trying to push as fast as possible at the same time. So a bit of a challenging position to be in, but nevertheless, um, pleased to come away with the podium. Next Grand Prix is 28th of August. You've got a few weeks off. I suspect having two podiums within a week, you'd probably quite like a race to be again next weekend. Yeah, but I think, you know, it's been an incredibly intense start to the season. I think the break will do everybody good. Uh, come back second half of the season, reset, refocus, and uh, try and fight for some victories. Go and enjoy the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. So your top three, it is George Russell in third place, Lewis Hamilton in second. What a comeback for Mercedes, but the ultimate comeback king today had to be Max Verstappen underneath the podium. Christian Horner now with his hood up as the rain comes down. Um, delighted with his man, extending his lead at the top of the championship to 80 points. And significantly as well in the Constructors' Championship. So that's the championship where all the big money is paid out for your finishing position. Mercedes closed the gap down to Ferrari once again. Now just 30 points separate Ferrari from Mercedes in that battle for second. And out in the lead, it is Red Bull still with a mighty advantage of almost 100 points. Um, Harry Benjamin in the uh, commentary box, nice and warm as I'm shivering out here in the freezing cold alongside, of course, our team for commentary. And I have to say, um, sorry, Mark Priestley, uh, I have to say that was a, an exciting race, but Verstappen was so cool, calm and in command in that race. As we uh, watch images of the uh, top three in the cool down room, just looking back at the uh, spectacular race, I'm still catching my breath on that one. The fascinating strategic battle unfolding there. And the, the rain would have been a nice addition, just a couple of laps in towards the end, but Valtteri Bottas uh, made sure we got another bit of spice with the virtual safety car too. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was a great race, wasn't it? From start to finish, there was so much going on. I mean, one of the things about this circuit is it never really spreads out because it's so tight and twisty. There's no long straight, so the the cars remain bunched up and you always get something going on here and we definitely got that today i thought it was a, a stunning race but yeah max verstappen delivered an almost perfect grand prix apart from that spin still managed to win by an absolute country mile the big questions though all yeah. sit at ferrari's door so all of the fans flooding now onto the track to celebrate the podium as Carlos Sainz comes into the media zone, the Ferrari driver. Uh, Charles Leclerc already here. A, a tough day for them. Sainz finishing fourth, Leclerc finishing sixth. Mark Priestley, you didn't hold back at all in your criticism of <laughs> Ferrari and it, it's been another bad day for them. How many of these will they have before they manage to get it right? Well, the big problem for them is that they've got a championship that they were pinning all hopes on trying to win. That all almost looks now too far away now. They might have to almost give up on that and start focusing on next year. They won't do that, of course. They'll never give up as long as there's a mathematical possibility. But they've got to get on top of these strategic errors they keep making because it's going to continually cost them until they can turn that around. Yeah, Charles Leclerc looking very frustrated with life and, and actually Carlos Sainz getting a very large briefing as the podium starts to take place here at the Hungaro ring. Lewis Hamilton climbs onto the second step. Just listen to the cheer. This will be huge for Max Verstappen. A lot of fans have poured into this Hungaro ring circuit to support Verstappen. They will do the national anthems, they will do the champagne and they will do the celebrations.
So the national anthem rings out for Max Verstappen. He now leads the championship by 80 points going into the summer break. This was round 13. We have 22 races this season and he is in a sweet spot as he lifts the trophy above his head and the crowd beneath clap and applaud him. They will do the champagne in just a few moments time but the trophies continue to be delivered now to the constructor as they get the trophy. And it's Adrian Newey, the technical genius behind this car who collects the trophy very rare to see him make a, such a public appearance. He doesn't really like to do it, to be honest, but he lifts the trophy. There will be a very large round of applause, I would imagine, for Lewis Hamilton. A lot of Mercedes fans here as he holds the trophy aloft into the air. And yes, as you can hear, lots of cheers rounding out for him. And then the man who started this race in pole position, George Russell, it wasn't to be for him today. A third place finish. He will be gutted. He'll be disappointed. You can hear reaction in the Checkered Flag podcast. We'll be recording that very shortly as the rain falls here at the Hungaro Ring. We have an hour until the start of the Euro finals as the champagne sprays out. Who will be victorious later today? That's a big question. George Russell said his attentions will split from here and Formula One to watching the football as England take on Germany from Wembley in one hour's time. Emma Saunders and the whole team standing by to bring you coverage from Wembley and we will be listening into that as well eagerly to see what happens but a dominant display from Max Verstappen here. A miracle almost it seems like for Mercedes though. Harry Benjamin, Mark Priestley of the commentary team for the Formula One today and you know Mercedes two drivers on that podium it was all unthinkable on friday unthinkable it's been a real roller coaster ride since thursday afternoon really for the mercedes team who've just really struggled for pace all weekend long we had such a change of conditions friday to saturday as well so a double podium for them i think will feel a bit like a win yeah won't give us any points <laughs> well no, no closing the gap is is pretty impressive uh, and you know the inquest will begin for Ferrari once again and you know we joked didn't we when they looked out second and third on the grid yesterday we joked and said oh how can Ferrari mess this up they've only gone and done it that's the problem <laughs> isn't it they've gone and done it they've gone and done it again and that is the problem that's why they're so far behind in this championship that's why it's almost certainly not going to come back to Italy at the end of this year and look this may be a bigger problem you know they've got some serious questions to ask it's not just the decisions being made on the day but why are these decisions being continually made is there a, a cultural problem at Ferrari is there a problem with the people they've got the systems or the processes they're using maybe they need to go back to the drawing board Priestley, are you <laughs> saying as much as you could, or I'm going to imply that you're saying in that maybe it's time for the boss of Ferrari, Mitya Bonotto, to to go? Well, I'm not going to go that far, but he's going to be the one having to answer the biggest questions. And how far do you, how long do you leave this going without having some success? We know how much pressure there is at Ferrari to get it right. I'm not saying it's easy. It's never easy. I don't want to criticise them too much, but this is the elite level of motorsport. This is the pinnacle and they have to do better. Well, let us know your thoughts. Hashtag BBCF1. As I said, we'll be recording the chequered flag. You can subscribe to it if you like. We'd love you to. And then it will drop into your inbox straight away wherever you get your podcasts. Um, but it is the summer break. There's plenty of racing still to come, though, as we have a triple header coming up. Yes, you heard that right. It'll be Spa. Then we'll go to the home of Max Verstappen, which is going to be a rowdy rabble of a weekend, I would imagine, from Zandvoort. And then it's Italy before the flyaways begin and the rain starts to come down even more heavily here, which is beautiful. Um, right. Thank you to our commentary team. It is time to hand over to the football at Wembley. Before we do that, uh, let's cross over to the latest news um, with Carl Hartley.